So any griffin that you have, if you want to paint along with me, otherwise feel free to just sit back and relax and watch me paint and hopefully get some tips out of this. So um, before we get started on the actual miniature, I want to kind of talk to you about the things that I have um, prepared for myself so that I can paint. Uh, so I do have my brushes. Obviously you need brushes, right? <laughs> so I have a few different brushes here um, that I intend to use. So I have a wider brush that I'm not as worried about the bristles. I'm going to use this one to put my base coat on my miniature. Um, and then I have my more detailed brush here that I intend um, to use for like once I start getting into the detail aspect of my miniature. Um, and then I have one that has kind of older, it started to fray at the ends and things like that. And so I'm gonna use that in what's called dry brushing. I'll talk to you more about that. And then I brought this one out. It's got a nice angle to it. You can see that on the brush there. It's a very new brush. And so I don't know um, if you have had new brushes very often, but sometimes the bristles are still pretty stiff because you haven't gotten them wet or anything. And this can also be pretty handy for like making some fine, like straight lines or even dry brushing a little bit. So, so that's what I have brought this brush out for. I don't know that I'll end up using it, but I wanted to have it on hand just in case it was something I wanted to use. Okay, so that's my brushes. I also have um, my brushes. two things of I water have that I have set out in front of me here. I also have that I have the reason I do that is because I want to have uh, one to that clean that my brushes between colors, obviously. And then the second one I use as um, a clear uh, or a clean um, water so that I can add that to my paints or use it for anything else that I might need to like rinse something that I don't want the dirty paint water to be in. So um, sometimes you'll find that your paints are a little thick. Maybe they go on kind of heavy. Um, a lot of paint companies do make thicker paints. Um, and so I typically just use water to thin those out so that I can um, paint a little smoother with them. Um, okay, so that's what um, I've got those there for. I've also got my paints set aside here. I'm gonna pull those over. So I've got several different ones here, but you don't necessarily need everything that I have got here. So the ones that I'm intending to use are going to be these base colors of uh, just kind of a, a real dark, like reddish type color is gonna be part of my base. And then I've got a real dark brown color that's going to be tart, part of my base base coat on my miniature. Um, some people just prefer to use straight black, and that's fine. I typically try not to use a straight black color on my base. Um, I feel like it gives better, more natural light in my miniature in the shadows. Um, and then I'm going to be using kind of a, a blondish, yellowy orange kind of color and then a, uh, a brighter kind of brown color that is kind of like a rusty brown looking color. And then I have a couple other lighter colors even. Um, I'm not sure I'm gonna use this one, so I'm gonna just show you these two for now. So uh, a lighter orangish yellow to kind of give me some highlights on a few things and a lighter brown to give me some highlights. And then it's always handy to have a little white around um, to add to anything or give additional highlights. And then I do have just kind of a red color that I can mix with whatever I want. Um, like so for uh, our mouth and things like that, if I want that to be more natural look. Okay, so, so I do have um, black, white, and red just as like, um, highlights for additional aspects kind of thing. But the main things we're gonna be using are gonna be these yellowy orange colors and some brown colors to paint our griffin, okay? So just in case you wanted to go grab what paints you have to follow along with on that, okay? And you don't have to have a specific one of these colors as long as you kind of get the concept. Um, for the base paint, make sure you get um, the darkest version of, of these that you can um, because they're really gonna be like our um, inset creases and low lights. 
Okay, another thing that I have here is just this little medicine bottle for my um, dog's medicine that he had. And the reason I have this is because I don't like to hold my miniature in my hand when I am painting it. So what I usually like to do is I'll take some kind of um, piece like this. Um, for bigger miniatures, I typically try and have a bigger surface, but you can use a bottle cap. Um, I have also used a uh, cork with a pin, and then I'll drill a hole and put the pin in the other side of the pin in here and it will hold it and then you can just hold the cork and move the cork around. There's lots of different ways that you can do this. So um, there's even things out there that people, or that companies will, that sell, um, that just literally just to hold your miniature. So there's lots of different ways you can do this, but I typically end up going the less expensive route and just using a medicine bottle here. So I've put some glue on there. Um, just regular super glue and then I'm going to just press my miniature down on that and let that sit for a minute um, and the great thing about having um, the durable plastic miniatures as well as having a plastic surface to glue it on is that once I'm done painting my miniature all I have to do is apply just a little bit of pressure with my thumbs and that sucker will pop right off. I don't even have to worry about it getting stuck on there or having to incorporate this cap as part of my miniature. So anyway, so while that's drying, I'm going to let that sit for a second and kind of dry. Um, I do want to kind of talk about, so this is an owl bear that I had done last year. And so um, I want to use a lot of the same techniques that I had used on this owl bear with a lot of this um, like shadowing and dry brushing, um, some highlighted colors and things like that. So I just wanted to kind of give you an example of what I'm going to be doing there um, and kind of looking at that. And then um, something else that I had done prior to um, jumping on this call is that I had um, used a, a little scalpel here and, and trimmed up some of the pieces on the miniature because a lot of times with these plastic ones when you pull them out of the box well actually honestly with just about any miniature once you get it out of the box you'll notice that there's like little ridges and things like that and I didn't get all of them like I don't know if you can see it or not but there's still some ridges like underneath of his wing here a little bit underneath of his neck that I probably could clean up a little bit more and in his mouth a little bit but but what my intentions here are, are is just for tabletop painting so I'm not trying to enter this thing into a contest I just want it to look cool and when I put it on the table for my players I want them to be like oh that's neat you know so so that's that's what I'm here to do. So I am um, not worried about doing any extra cleaning that I would want to do if I was painting for a competition. OK. Oh, he is not gluing as quickly as I was hoping he would. I tried to get a gel super glue so that he would glue a little faster, but he is not. I don't think his base is flat and I think that is what is giving me issues. All right, I'm gonna let him, I'm gonna hold him on there for just a little bit longer. Um, but while we're waiting for that, another thing that I can go ahead and show you is um, why I picked the colors that I did. So we can jump over to uh, my computer here and go ahead and look at some of these screenshots that I've pulled up to uh, that helped me consider what colors to pick for my Griffin. So in case you don't already know, um, a griffin is typically consistent of a, um, a lion back half with like the eagle um, or some bird of prey kind of, um, well, it's usually an eagle, front half. And so that's, that's kind of the miniature that we have. So what I did was I jumped online and literally just Google searched images. And so we've got images of different lions here. And so this one here, um gives us a good view of the back side of this lion because again our griffin is only the back half of the lion we don't have to worry about the front half so i kind of look at this back half here 
and I can see the darker side of the lion, or I'm sorry, the top side of the lion is the darker side. And it's kind of maybe this tannish color. Here's, oh, that's kind of a small picture. That's a fake lion. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta go through a few of them. Let's see if we can find anything else that would show us that back end a little bit more that shows us. So, but we can see that different lions have different tones, just like people. We have different skin tones, they have different fur tones. So um, we can kind of pick our own kind of colors that we want to go off of, which is why I picked like this or uh, um, orchidy kind of color. Uh, I thought that blonde color would be a good a good place for us to be along with the other colors that, that I've picked here. So, so anyway, so there's that. And then the other thing that I always like to try and point out is that a lot of times you'll find the underside, the underside of an animal, um, especially a mammal, um, is going to be a lighter color than the top side of the mammal. And so when we get to actually painting that piece of our griffin, um, I'm gonna want to make sure that my underside here and like the, the inside of the back legs, so like right in here, that is going to be a, a lighter blonde color uh, compared to the top side of the lion. And that just gives it a more <clears throat> natural kind of look or like a, like a realistic look. Um, we don't always think about those things. So sometimes it's good to have reference photos and things that we can kind of be like, okay, what does a real lion look like? Um, so then same thing, if we keep going over, eagles, we can look up different types of eagles and what they look like. We kind of have a good concept of this usually because we usually will see eagles around and things like that, at least if you're in Missouri and by a river. Um, so we can kind of look at that piece. Um, so the griffin, you'll notice, has the head, the wings, and the claws, but no, no tail feathers. So we don't have to worry about those tail feathers, but we have to focus on just about everything else of, of the eagle. Um, and then another aspect I always like to try and mention is that when you see a, an, a depiction of a griffin, usually it's a bald eagle that they use. But that doesn't have to be what you use. There are lots of different types of eagles. And so you can look up different types of eagles too and see, you know, what kind of eagle do I want my griffin to, to be um, or to look like. So you can kind of pull from different areas. Um, um, so if we look at this like sea eagle here, this stellar sea eagle, you can see on the wing here at the front side of the wing, it is kind of more um, white to black instead of the mostly black. Um, let's see. The teller or whatever, whatever this eagle is, you can see it's more of like a cream color to a blue almost. And the black hawk eagle, it has like more of a stripe pattern that goes down its wings. Um, the booted eagle, its underside and the front side is more of like this tannish cream color. So we can do lots of different things um without just using just the, the straight traditional bald eagle for our griffin so um i'm probably going to follow more of the bald eagle pattern um since that's what you know you averagely see a, a griffin portrayed as but just know that you've got lots of options out there you can still make a realistic fantasy creature <laughs> um and not necessarily follow what you traditionally see and it can can give your your creature a little extra character when you do stuff like that. Um, another option you could use is looking at like the different ages. Maybe we have a very young griffin and it has more of the brown feathers still in its head. So, um, you know, something else to consider when you're painting your miniature of, you know, like what maybe age range makes a difference, whether it's juvenile or if it's full grown adult. Um, and so that can also sway your painting styles and things like that. Okay, so um, 
just some concepts and I'm gonna have these up for myself over here on the side so that I can kind of keep an idea for myself. But I'm gonna go ahead and go back over to the miniature here because it looks like, it looks like it's gonna, its base is too wobbly, unfortunately. So another way to get around this, and I don't have any here, so that's okay. So we're just gonna get paint all over my fingers, which is fine. <laughs> but another way you can go about this, if you can't get your miniature to actually glue on because the base is warped, um, something you can do instead is take like um, poster putty or something and like and stick that on there and that will hold it as well so i've done that before as uh as like an, an option for it i didn't bring in poster putty but that's okay like i said uh, the only thing that that does is gets my my fingers a little more painted <laughs> all right so it all washes off it's acrylic so it'll be just fine okay so let's go ahead and get started um, I have um, a plate, just a regular paper plate that I am going to use for my, um, my paint palette. Um, if you know how to make a wet palette, feel free to do that. Um, if, um, if you just have a paper plate or a, um, like a, I don't know, so like use, use whatever works for you. Whatever works to, uh, to get your paints put out on, okay? So, all right, I am going to start with my dark, dark brown. Um, and the paints that I'm using are a mixture um, of P3. So some of them are P3 and then some of them are Reaper. Those are kind of some of my more favorite paints to use. Um, but honestly, there are so many really great miniature painting um, paint brands out there so don't feel limited to these by any means um, these just happen to be some colors that I have found that I really really enjoy um, and that's why I'm using them but again I have lots of different paints from lots of different brands so don't limit yourself by brand just find what colors work for you and what colors you really like and kind of go from there <clears throat> Okay, so I just added a little bit of water on my palette. I took some of the paint from the P3 paint, put it on my palette, and added some water just to kind of thin it out a little bit because I don't want this to get really um, goopy on my miniature. I want it to spread and um, just give it a thin base layer. Um, so that way I can build off of it because what we're gonna do today is a lot of layering on top of each other To give our creature some more detail. Okay. All right So I'm gonna go ahead this dark brown this that I'm doing for a base is gonna be on the back side the lion side of my griffin so let's just go ahead I'm not gonna be um, Real careful or anything. This is just a base coat so I am not worried about getting it on um, the other pieces of my miniature. I'm not worried about getting it on the base um, or anything like that. So just generously spread out that paint so um, it covers all the nooks and crannies and all the little spaces. And if you get it on, I'm not planning to put this on as the intended base coat for my feathers, but um, if you have your own griffin, or if you can see on mine, the feathers and the fur to the backside, they kind of have this spot where they kind of meld into each other as it transitions from its bird side to its lion side. And so I am going to generously add some of this brown into those feathers right there where those two come together, where they meet, okay? So that's going to give me like a good um, opportunity to blend a little bit later on my two base coats and then in turn on my top coat as well, okay? 
So um, you'll notice I this was the first time I kind of dipped back into my uh, paint pool over here because again, I'm not trying to like put a giant coat on this. This is not my last coat that is gonna go on this back side here. And so I, um, I want the paint that I have in my brush um, to last and cover my miniature instead of, uh, and actually spread around on my miniature instead of just using a, a lot of it on one space. And I will say that covering, doing your base coat on your miniature can sometimes be frustrating. So, so give yourself a little break. It's okay. Um, when you feel like you've got a good coat on it, I would really suggest going back and doing a double take on all the areas that you, you can and um, just looking them over because I don't know about you all if you've painted before, but I always seem to miss like a little crevice or um, like an underbelly piece or behind a leg or whatever. I'm always seeming to miss just a little something on my miniature um, when I think I'm done. So, so, just, so just give it a good once over and just see if you've missed anything on it. Okay, so I'm to the point where I think I have covered everything. Just kind of given just a few spots that look a little thin, just another touch. Um, another really great aspect of putting a thin coat on, oh, nope, there's a spot right there underneath his belly. See, I told you I'd miss a spot. <laughs> another good thing about having um, your first coat be a nice thin coat is that it's going to dry a lot faster for us than if we had put on just a lot of paint that first go around. Thinning our paint out um, allows us to layer a lot nicer and still show that detail um, and then also helping it dry faster. Oh, there's one on his, his flank there. Missed that underneath of his wing. There we go. Okay, got that spot. Oh, I think my finger hit his backside here because some of that paint came off. Another negative to not having him on the uh, medicine bottle that I wanted him on. But sometimes you'll accidentally hit some of those spots and jostle some paint off of there. Okay, I think this might be the last little cranny that I've missed something. That looks pretty good, I think. Okay, worst case scenario, I've still got the paint on my palette. I can always come back. Do this again um, and go back over it. Okay, so this back side there is this nice dark brown color. And keep in mind, we plan to go to this more blonde kind of color. So once we get this layered on there, this blonde is going to be tamed down by this brown. And, um, and the brown, of course, will be a lot lighter because we're using this um, on top of it. So um, it just, it's using the, the colors to play off of each other. Um, we, I didn't want this like very, very bright yellow to actually be what came out on my miniature. Um, so that is why we're putting this base coat on here to, um, to give it a better chance of, of being the color that I actually want it to be, okay? Okay, so. I am going to use my water that is specifically for cleaning my brush <laughs> rather than the water that is for um, adding to my paint. Okay, so just give that one more little wash there. Okay, and then I always like to have a spare paper towel to dry my brush off on instead of using my surface that I'm painting on to dry. So I'm just just have a paper towel set aside here for that that drying uh, drying the paintbrush out. Okay, shake my paint up here. All right, so I'm gonna move on to this very dark. Um, I'm trying to think like a wine kind of color, like a very deep wine or burgundy color here. 
Um, it's kind of got some brown tones to it a little bit. So I'm gonna add this, this to my palette. I have found that I really enjoy using this as a base coat for some of my darker browns that I like to use, um, as well as my reds. This is a great base coat for my reds. At least I like it a lot. Okay, there we go. All right, so I'll clean that off because I want, I want some clean water to add to this color on my palette. Put a few drops in there. Add that off. All right, let's mix in this water. Get it a little thinner. There we go. Okay, yep, I'm liking the way that looks. Okay. I have a little bit much on my brush. Okay, there we go. All right, so I am going to put my base coat of this red color on um, on the wings because I want the wings to be that um, more dark brown color, dark reddish brown. So we're gonna add that on there. Some color onto the wings. You'll you'll notice like um, a lot more detail that comes out. At least on the miniature that I'm using, um, this miniature is from WizKids. It's one of their unpainted um, griffins. And there's a lot of really nice detail in these wings. And what that's going to really do for us later is be great for dry brushing. And that dry brushing later on, that's how we get our highlights in and kind of uh, and make some of that pop out a little bit. That'll really show nicely in our miniature later. Um, and sometimes just giving that little extra highlight can just really just make a miniature just look great and just really pop out on the table, which is really awesome. All right, let's do this other wing. Okay. Um, another thing on when you're painting big surface, surfaces like this, because it's going to be time consuming and that's okay. And even I still get impatient and I will grab too much paint <laughs> on the first go around of trying to put some, uh, trying to spread out everything onto the miniature. And so um, if that happens and you do end up getting like a spot that is um, just a little more heavy paint than you anticipated, just use that to your advantage and um, don't let it dry there, but instead just kind of um, use it as like your paint pool a little bit and keep grabbing from it and then spreading out somewhere else and then grab from it again and spread it out somewhere else. Um, so, you know, you haven't ruined anything by, by over excessive painting one area as long as you don't let it dry, which if it's if it's pretty thick it won't dry quickly so that's okay so just keep using it as your paint pool instead of going back to your palette and uh, pull pull paint from it spread it somewhere else pull some more paint spread it somewhere else and we'll be just fine okay I'm liking that um, so the top of his wings I think are looking pretty good um, I don't know how well you can tell on the camera, but there are some feathers that are similar to his wings right here on his back that go into the fur. And so I'm just going to go ahead and put this on there as well. Now you'll notice I'm skipping the head, okay? I plan to use that traditional bald eagle look. And a lot of times you'll see that griffins it's a little more than the actual eagles we looked at earlier. Um, or they kind of have longer necks, I guess, than the eagles we looked at earlier. And so you'll see that the feathering on the head is different from the feathering on the wings and on the arms. And so the feathering on the head, you can tell the texture difference. So you can kind of see where that piece ends versus like where the, the feathers, the bigger feathers on his arm and his front legs and his um, wings are. 
So um, I am only putting this really dark red color on those more excessively large feathers and not on his head feathers. I'm gonna do a different color on his um, head feathers because I want that to go to a white rather than a brown kind of color. All right, I'm gonna flip him over, <clears throat> grab some more paint, do his underwings here. There we go. There we are. Make sure we're getting those creases. Again, if your griffin is anything like mine, he has a lot, a lot of detail in those wings. And although that detail is fantastic for making it look cool later, it can be challenging and a little frustrating sometimes <laughs> to get into all those little crevices. So, so take your time, make sure you get everything in there because that's really what this base coat is for. It's not for being able to see in your finished design on the surface. It's to be able to fill in those cracks and look like our shadows, like a more natural kind of shadow. Um, so for those of you that have like maybe pets and stuff at home, um, whether it be bird or mammal or whatever, um, anything with like a fur or some kind of covering over its skin. <laughs> um, so it's probably not lizards, but anyway, um, for those of you that have critters at home, um, you can usually see that the under coat that they have, uh, even with the birds, like the softer feathers underneath of their main feathers is typically a different color than, um, than their like top coat, their main coat. And so, or their main feathers, if it's a bird. So you, this base coat, think of that as like our, the, the under feathers of our, um, eagle here or the under fur um, the undercoat of our fur for our lion. So I have a um, fairly new puppy. I think she's nine months now or maybe 10 months now. I don't know. She's, she's getting a little older, but she's still very much a puppy. Um, and she has this really pretty, she's mostly white with some, some brown speckles, but she has this really pretty undercoat that shows when she's either, um, wet from the bath or if her fur is just kind of parted because she's been laying weird or something she's got this really gorgeous brown under under coat that um you almost can't see through her white fur unless it's parted which always just baffles me because i'm like how can you not see brown fur underneath of a white coat but I don't know, but uh, but anyway, so it's kind of like that. Like this is what we're doing. We're putting this undercoat of color um, on to give it that shadow, to give it that more natural look rather than like a, a bland flat look. Okay, I am running out of my base coat here on my palette. So I'm gonna need a refresher. I just wanna use what's left in my brush here before I move over to that. But, okay. I've got that wing covered pretty well. Um, just like, oh, yeah, see, I already found spots. Just like we did on the back side when we finished with that dark brown, I want to go back through and check for any of those little creases that I may have missed because of the angle I was looking at. Yep, I can see some right down in there. I still have enough, enough paint in my paintbrush right now that I can kind of poke down into those. So I'm just doing that just real quick before I get some extra paint to finish up my four legs. Oh, there's another spot there. Oh, I might be out. I might be pretty close to being done. Okay, so you'll notice that my um, this brush, I've just kind of been poking and prodding as necessary. Like most of the time I'm brushing, but every once in a while for those little creases, you know, I'm poking or I'm prodding into those little areas, you know, and things like that. 
Um, so for my base coats, I do like to use a brush that I don't care as much about so that I can do that and not worry about the tip of my brush, okay? Um, just an FYI. <laughs> That's why I have multiple brushes, is so that, you know, I can use some for, for activities that I'm not as worried about um, damaging the brush on. Um, same thing with dry brushing. Again, when we get to that point, I will, I will show you in better detail about what dry brushing is and, and how we do it. But dry brushing, I do the same thing. I like to have a brush that is maybe a little more frayed, something I'm not as concerned about damaging. All right, I'm gonna pull my red back out, my very, very dark red. So same color I've been using. I just need a little bit more to make it through those front legs of my griffin. So let's go ahead and put those on here. There we go. Pretty certain that should be enough. All right, so rinse my brush so that I can get some clean water. All right, grab some clean water from my second cup here. Dab a couple of droplets of water. Okay, mix that up to thin out the paint. So I'm not getting a real thick base a very nice thin base all right be happy with that okay so let's go back oh i think i have a little too much paint on there so um i don't know how well you can see it but i started to paint this leg and just like lost the detail in it so i just feel like i put too much paint on there so i'm just gonna dab some off on this paper towel I've been using. Go back to it. I'm not gonna wipe off that paint that I had put on there because I can just use my brush to pull that down into other areas. So just like I mentioned on the wings, we're just gonna keep using that little pool as our starting point and pull from it and pull that paint into other areas. Here we go, all right. There we go. All right, I've got that paint thinned out a little, little bit more, so that's good. All right. Down his chest. So again, I'm not super worried about overlapping those head feathers, but I am trying to be a little more cautious around them. Um, we still want that blending aspect because it's still going to be, you know, the, the head feathers blending into the, the chest and uh, leg feathers. So I do wanna still have that blending aspect, but if you've ever used uh, white before, um, if, you, if you've painted a lot and you've used white, <laughs> um, you'll know that like it's really hard to pull a sharp white, like a eagle's head is such a sharp white. So it's really hard to pull out that sharp white if it is on top of another color that is so dark. And so that is why I don't really want to um, use this dark color on that head. I'm gonna use a lighter color for, for that under undercoat on that head. All right, flip them upside down here, get some of these backside sections. All right, all right, we're gonna be careful that we get all these little crevices underneath because that is some of the hardest places to get. So I'm just trying to make sure I get all of those. So although I'm not gonna do his actual claws, uh, talons, his, leg, his bottom legs um, in this color, I'm not as worried about getting this color on that part because this, this reddish color will actually end up playing nicely with the yellowish orange that we are going to um, put over top of it. So I'm not worried about that overlap in color. So if you've gotten some of this red onto your talons, that is okay. Don't worry about it. All right. 
All right, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do the once over. Just make sure. Oh nope, found a spot already. Okay, sorry, it's kind of getting out of view now because I'm trying to get all these little tiny spots here. So just bear with me as I get these little, little detailed aspects. Okay. All right, I'm just kind of moving it around because sometimes our eye doesn't catch things in the first angle. So if we move our angle around, yep. See, I missed that one right down in there. So get that. Okay. The hidden pockets and the deep crevices are the ones you want to check the best. All right, I think, I think I did a fairly good job there. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. I'm gonna clean my brush. Oh, you know what I didn't do though? Um, with this color that I wanted to do. I'm gonna go ahead and do it now. Um, so, something else I want to do is I want to use this reddish color on the tail piece right there. So the lion's fur tail. So if I was painting an actual lion, <clears throat> I would be using this reddish brown on its mane, if it had a mane, and, um, and I would want the mane to be the same color as the tuff of fur or a very similar color as the tuff of fur on its tail. So with the griffin, we don't have a mane, but we do have a chest of feathers and some wings. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make that tail the same color as the wings and the tuft of feathers on his chest. So that way it kind of pulls that color back down the griffin's body and kind of shows some um, some harmony between um, between its two dividing halves, cat and bird. <laughs> okay, there we go. All right, I think I got all the little pieces of that tail, so that's good. All right. Dry that off. Okay. So, what I'm going to do for the head is I'm actually going to use this um, more orchidy color as its base coat. <clears throat> so, I'm going to put some of that on my palette. There we go. Okay some clean water there we go mix that in thin it out for our nice base coat here that looks good all right I didn't use as much of this paint on my palette um, and so I didn't use as much water on it but I do still want it to be fairly thin um, and since we're our final coat on this is going to be white I'm not quite as worried about it showing more white in the end, but I do still want to try and get into those creases, okay? So you'll see that the, the paint's flowing pretty nicely down into the little creases there. Um, yellow as a base coat is not typically a good idea um, because it is so thin, um, just an, as a color in general, it's just so light and so thin, it typically shows the underside of it still so much. And the thin aspect of the paint tends to fall into the creases more and therefore does not um, always cover the top aspects. Um, so like those... Uh, the feathers that are kind of bumped up more and things like that, it will it will not stay on top of those, but instead fall into the creases more. And most of the time you don't want that on a base coat. You want to actually cover everything just like we did with all of our other aspects. However, since our, our Griffin was originally this like whitish gray color, it's really not too big of a deal if that those pieces show through. Now, I do kind of feel like, you probably can't tell on the camera, but in person I feel like I used 
maybe a little too much paint. So I'm dried my brush. I rinsed it and dried it. And I'm going to go back through with my paint brush and just brush back over those areas that I feel like there might be a little bit of too much paint in some of those creases and just kind of pull it back out. Okay. Um, so I don't have to wipe my whole miniature down just because I felt like I used too much paint. I can just kind of pull some of that back out with my paintbrush. If your paintbrush is dry, make sure that you rinse it off and then dry it. And then you can use it to pull out some of that paint. Okay. All right. Now, um, again, don't feel like, uh, if you are painting along, don't feel like you have to go back over with a second coat of yellow. We really just want this to look more like, um, that under fur or under feather that, um, that creatures have. This is not something that we want to be like very thick or anything because we don't necessarily want that yellow to show through on all aspects. If a little bit peeks through at the end, that's okay. It just gives it a little bit of character, but we don't want a lot of it to show through. So, okay. So I'm pretty happy with the way that's turned out. I am going to use one of my lighter brown colors. So this is a brown that I intend to use on the feathers here in a little bit, but I'm going to use it as my base coat for my talons. So something else that this can do. And so, uh, same thing with the yellow that I used on the head, that orchid color that I used on the head, um, this color showing through the talons at the bottom. And when I keep saying talons, I mean the whole foot. So not just like the actual nail talons. But anyway, um, so what this will do is any parts of it that show through will pull more of the color or pull your eye to more of the colors elsewhere. And so it again, it just kind of gives um, your creature a little more um, harmony and pulling together its different colors so that it's not just like one bright color in one area. It, it pulls that color through different aspects of your miniature um, and can really kind of pull it together and again drawing your eye to different pieces not just one area of the miniature. So if you missed um, yesterday I did a color theory um, just kind of a real basic color theory class using Hero Forge um, and a couple of resources online. So if you uh, really kind of want to know just a little bit more about some of that basic color theory, that should be on YouTube now. And you can go back and watch that one if you want to. All right. All right. I'm pretty happy with this brown. This is looking good. And then we're going to top it with some orange later All right now my actual nails on my talon I intend to just do black because um, if you um, if you want to pull up so, right a on. image of an eagle which I still have on my computer screen so that um, so I can still kind of look at some things and, and reference them um, if you pull up an eagle for a reference photo their talons are typically black so they're usually just kind of a flat, um, flat black color. And so that is why I have the black over here that I do, uh, so that I can paint those talons that black color. So I'm not worried about this undercoat because honestly, black will cover just about anything. <laughs> so, so I'm not worried about this, um, this color covering the actual nails of the talon. That is perfectly fine for me. Now, everything I'm doing, I'm doing with the intention of making this fantasy, mythical creature look as realistic like it could be an actual creature in our world as possible. Um, which is why I'm using reference photos from the real world of animals that this creature is said to be made up of. 
Um, so that when a human eye who knows what a lion and knows what an eagle should look like in their heads, they see that. Like, that's what I want them to see. Um, and I want their, their brain to believe it, not just, you know, me tell them and they're like, oh, okay, I see that. I don't want to have to tell them what this is. I want them to just know. So anyway, that all being said, you know, um, role-playing games are fantasy. So you don't have to follow everything that, you know, that I'm doing. You can make your creatures look like whatever you want them to look like. Um, so, you know, use whatever colors you want. Just take the basic concepts instead of the actual, the small bit of color theory I'm passing through here. <laughs> Okay, I think I think I've pretty well gotten into all the little nooks and crannies. Just doing that pass through, like I mentioned before, making sure. Okay, I'm feeling pretty good about that. All right. Um, now, sometimes, again, I mentioned this in my color theory class, but um, sometimes having colors next to each other can throw our eye off of what we're actually looking at. Um, so like when I start to add colors to some of these other areas, the fact that my base is this off gray weird color might throw my brain off of painting these other areas. So what I like to do is I like to still give my, my base just like a once over. I probably won't touch the rest of it until the very, very end, but I do like to give it a once over just to like give it some color and so that like my brain can be like, okay, maybe this is kind of the color that my, ba my base might end up being, okay? So to go ahead and do that, this is not something you need to do, but I'm going to do it just so that uh, we'll ease my brain on color concepts and contrasting colors. So I am going to just make myself a little gray kind of color here using my white. Okay, let's put some white on there. There we go. A little more than I wanted, but that's okay. And my black. Let's see if my black actually is openable. Yep, okay, perfect. All right, so let's put some black out there. All right. Okay. Um, I'm going to keep using my big brush. So I am going to be a little more cautious. I'm going to get some clean water, put a few droplets over here. Actually, that might be too much. Pull some of that back out. Um. I'm going to use uh, my big brush again to do the base, but I am going to be a little bit more careful about applying um, this on there because I don't really want this gray color that I just created. Um, I have no necessarily measurements <laughs> that I just did. I just put a little droplet of clean water on there, took a little bit of white and added it into the water and then pulled in some black until I liked the color. <laughs> and um, if you look outside, you could see that, you know, the ground, even rocks and things are not just like one solid color. So even though my paint palette here, because of the way I mixed it, has kind of a mixture of like, this side is a little lighter, this is a little darker, there's some dark streaks in there. I'm not worried about getting a clean, solid, um, color on my palette for this gray specifically because uh it's just you know it's just the ground and the ground is all kinds of different shades of color even on like the same rock or the same surface um things like that so I'm not really worried about if it comes in lighter or if it comes in darker or anything like that um if you're not feeling comfortable with being a little bit more cautious around these uh, feet of our, crit or our critter, then feel free to, to move to a smaller brush if you want to. 
Um, I don't want to because I just want to kind of save some time here. And I've already gotten a little bit of gray on one of the feet, I can see. And it's not an, it's not an awful thing by any means. It's not like I'm using a real super dark color. Uh, so I'm not super worried about it. But, you know, be cautious where you can. So, all right. Just going to cover... Over our sections. I'm gonna try and get into those creases the best I can. Again, don't panic too much if you are getting a little sloppy with it. It's really not too big a deal um, if you're getting some of those colors onto your your critter. It's only our base coat, so I don't want you to, you know, to be stressed out. This, is, this should be fun and hopefully relaxing. <laughs> All right, I'm just getting some of those, some of those underside pieces. There we go. All right, get around this foot back here. Okay. I may have added just a tad too much water to this gray, or maybe it's because I didn't use as much paint when I was mixing the the white and um, black together. But honestly, again, I'm not super worried about it. This is mostly to give the base a coat so that my eye can be tricked into thinking it's actually standing on some kind of ground rather than just some gray blob <laughs> that it's standing on. So this is, um, you know, this is just for my brain's sake, not as a final product kind of concept here, okay? So, all right, all right. I think that should be enough to trick my brain into believing he's standing on a rock. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna clean that gray off. Okay, let's get into some detail, right? I think I am going to start with his backside here. So I'm going to start with the lion piece of him, okay? Um, and I, the reason, the biggest reason I want to do that <clears throat> is because it is kind of the most inner side of my griffin. It is going to be harder if I have completed this part of my griffin to reach in here and get that underside of, uh, of his belly and his leg here underneath of that wing and get any detail on it if I have this top side like perfect already. So I think I want to kind of try and get a better aspect of the underside and then I will move out to the wings afterwards, okay? So, to do that, sorry, <coughs> excuse me, goodness. Okay, to do that, I'm gonna pull back my orchid out. Oops. I'm gonna still use my big brush to put the paint on my palette, and then I'll move over to one of my other brushes, okay? So, let's put some paint out. There we go. Get some paint in there. All right, let's rinse this brush. Um, something that I see a lot of new new painters do that um, is it's just a really bad habit to form is that they will leave their brushes in their water while they're not using those brushes, and that's really not a good idea. Um, and I used to do it myself. Uh, until I had one of the ReaperCon artists um, talk to me about it. And so the reason that you don't do that is because of gravity. So when your brush is in your water, the water, just like your hair does underwater, will loosen the brushes up, okay? So the brushes are, or the bristles, sorry. The bristles are looser when they're in the water. And when it sits in the cup, facing down with the bristles that are all loose facing down, gravity continues to pull it down. Well, those bristles are soft and it will then start to 
kind of fray because of gravity. And so it's just like pushing on the ends and it will fray those little pieces. So, so when you leave it in there for long periods of time, those ends will fray more and it will be harder for you to get a point back out of it. So this one, I still can get this, this point, even though this is my really big brush, I can still kind of get this point out of it. However, this brush here is almost a lost cost <laughs> for that, for that. I still use it for dry brushing and it's fantastic for dry brushing, but I cannot get this one to form a point for me any longer. And it's from the gravity forcing those bristles apart. Okay. So just a, just a tip to not, don't leave your brushes in your water um, for that for one reason. And then the other reason is that the bristles, when they are, are right inside this little metal piece, they're all glued in there. And so that glue is soluble. And so it sitting in that water loosens them. And then it can cause even some of your very good brushes to then start to lose its bristles because that glue is losing its grip on them. So just some, some information on trying to make sure that you don't leave your brushes in your paint or in your water, sorry, in your water too long. Okay. All right. I'm going to grab another paper towel here. Just lay that aside. Just because my other one's getting pretty worn. All right. So I need to grab my regular brush. This is my typical brush that I use. Um, it's one of my favorite paint brushes that I like to use. Um, and we're going to add some water to our orchid color here. Okay, here we go. I'm just going to mix that a little bit. Okay, that's looking pretty good, I think. All right, so, um, so this is not going to be our highlight color. This is going to be our main color. So I am going to go ahead and apply this color pretty generously onto our miniature. Now, just like I talked about before, yellow is a tough color. So we are probably going to need a couple coats of this on our miniature because we're putting it over the top of this dark brown color. So just because your brown is showing through so much, like you can even see it here where that brown is really showing through, that is okay. Because just like we looked at before, the lions are not a flat, you know, brown color or a flat blonde color. They have some tone to them. And we're going to layer this yellow. So as we add another layer on after this layer dries, <clears throat> we'll find that layer on layer, we're going to see a better concept of, of covering this blonde color over that dark brown color. So again, right now we're just looking at getting our first coat on, on the miniature. And again, we don't want this to be like a thick blobbed coat, which is why I've, I've put in some water into my um, paint again. You probably noticed I'm also painting my thumb at the same time. So that is my attempt. Um, I don't even know where I got this habit from, but uh, that's my attempt to not put too much paint on the miniature in one go around. And so I typically try and like get some of the excess paint off of my brush before applying it to the miniature um, so that I'm not, um, you know, gooping on all this paint to my miniature. I don't want, I don't want an excessive amount on my miniature. Um, I don't know if you can see it on camera or not. But the flank, yeah, you can kind of see it. It's a little blacked out right there. The flank of my griffin has this little indent right here. Um, and that is just something from the mold, just an accident from the mold. Um, 
So something I could have done ahead of time is I could have uh, taken some putty. Um, a lot of times people will use what's called green stuff. You can literally just Google search green stuff and that, and you'll see what it is. <laughs> it's just, it's just a, a mold that fills in for your miniature and then um, air dries. You don't have to bake it or anything like that. And uh, it fills in any patches that you might have on your miniature. Now, again, if uh, just like I mentioned at the very beginning, if I had been painting this for a contest, I probably would have done some more filler on this miniature to just make sure I'm mi not missing any of those points on it um, where like, with the mold has um, accidentally left a mark of some kind or whatever. Um, I didn't show it to you guys earlier, but I can see pretty easily that one of the wings has a gap in it and I very well could have filled that gap with some green stuff, some putty, uh, to kind of fill in those little areas and stuff like that. So if you're painting for contest, I definitely recommend taking those extra steps and, and, and making sure that you're, you're getting all these af aspects of your critter perfected a little bit more. But just like I mentioned at the beginning of this, I am painting, um, I really enjoy painting for tabletop purposes and just being able to stick a cool miniature out there for my friends and for them to just be like, oh, that's so neat, you know? So, um, so that's why I have not done those things. Another reason I bring up that, that backside piece that we looked at there is because um, that actually is kind of a perfect little shape and size for what could be a bolt or an arrow from a enemy to our griffin. So if we really wanted to make like a, maybe a, a war, a war griffin, or even just like a, um, a veteran griffin, that's just kind of like maybe the older griffin in the pack or something like that, um, we could, or do they go by pride? I don't know, whatever griffins go by. Um, we could take a, um, a little red um, and brown and put it around that space and use it like a wound um, and then if you have spare weaponry um, which I do at home I don't have it here with me but if you have some spare weaponry or something like I have some just like random arrows that you might be able to like add to a miniature or something like that um, I could add an arrow like actually sticking out of his rear end and it would be it would be pretty fitting because that little indent is already there on his flank so just kind of some neat concepts to think about and don't always um don't underestimate the flaws that you find in the molding of the miniature but instead use them to make your miniature more interesting Okay. All right. I'm getting pretty close to my first coat being done on my Griffin's backside here. Depending on how wet the, the paint is still on some of those places I've already covered, I may move on to another area and then come back. But if it's pretty dry, then I will go ahead and start my second coat. So let me just finish this back paw here and then I'll see how we go. Um, if you're already ahead of me, feel free to, to check your own miniature already and just see, should I go ahead and put my second coat on? Um, if you're not sure and you decide to go ahead and try to put that second coat on, if you see that the original paint coat that you had put on starts to move with your paintbrush and starts to show more of that undercoat that we did already, um, then stop. Like don't, you don't want that to, uh, you don't want your paintbrush to pull up the paint that you've already put down. 
let it dry. Even if it looks very patchy right now, let it dry. It's better to let it dry and add another layer than just try and muddle around with what's already there, okay? So definitely just make sure you let it dry first. We can go back. So you'll even see, I'm gonna rinse my brush real quick so that it's not sitting out and wet or painted. So you'll even see on the, what I have done here, it's very patchy. Like it looks very patchy right now. And obviously I'm not happy with that, but I do want it to for sure be very dry before I start to go back in and add those um, additional aspects to it, okay? Um, and there you can kind of see there were several places I was not incredibly careful and I got some yellow on some other areas and that's okay because we're gonna go back over those areas anyway with a darker color than what we are using right now. So, um, so with my lighter colors, I'm not quite as um, concerned about getting on some of those areas that are going to end up being darker, especially where I got that yellow right there. That's going to be a black talon, so I'm like, eh, whatever. But, okay, I think I've talked long enough <laughs> that my yellow is dry. So let's go ahead and go back in and do our second coat. Although, give me just a second because I kind of feel like... I'm gonna sneeze. <laughs> Sorry. Good. Okay. Oh, I didn't sneeze, but. All right. I think I'm doing okay so far. All right. Let's pull some more of this yellow. Okay. Doing okay. All right. Let's. Put down our second layer. And I will go back and I will talk about more blending when we go to do our um, brown on top of the wings and the backside there. So um, you can kind of go up into the feathers a little bit. Um, don't go too far up, but doing a little bit is okay. Because again, we're going to go back and talk about that blending later on. Okay, there we go. <laughs> there we go. All right, I'm already really liking this color with a second coat. This is already looking nicer. Okay. Get some of that patchiness out of there with this coat. Oh, I got a glob on the wing. That's okay. That's, that's all right. Okay, there we go. It's looking like a nice blonde lion. It's probably a lot more blonde than um, than what a real lion would probably be, but. I don't think it's too bad. I think it'll look less blonde when we get some of the other colors, get that white on the front side on his head. I think it'll tame this down a little bit more. Okay, I think I'm gonna need some more of my orchid color before too long. I'm just gonna try and use what I've got here. And then I'll put some, some fresh paint out. So another thing about just using a straight paper plate like I'm doing is that um, the paint does dry faster on just a paper plate. And so, um, so I don't always get to use as much of the paint that I put out as I'd maybe like to. Um, something you can do to help that if you live in a dry area um, is you can make what's called a wet palette. Um, now some people just uh, buy the, the wet palettes from like the painting store online or something like that and that's perfectly fine. 
Um, but I have found that I more commonly have access <laughs> to a paper plate, paper towels, and water <laughs> than I do to my actual uh, wet palette kit. So that being said, um, to create a wet palette just by yourself, um, you can use a, uh, just like a paper plate or something. You take a paper towel. I usually try and do like two of the narrow slips and fold them in half and then fold them into a quarter and lay it across my palette. Um, and then you take some kind of uh, parchment paper. Um, a lot of times people like to use butcher paper because it's a little thinner and it allows some water absorption into it. Uh, and put that on top of the paper towel. And well, sorry, I say that. You will eventually put it on top of the paper towel. But first you want to put a little bit of water, just enough to soak into the entire paper towel. Um, and then, then you put the parchment paper on top, sorry. And then um, once you have the parchment paper pressed onto the wet paper towel, it should keep your paint wet um, for longer because the water that is in the paper towel will absorb into that parchment paper, which then in turn sits with your paints. Um, it keeps them wet longer. So it's pretty handy. I learned that trick at ReaperCon. Um, and I, I do use it a lot, actually. I just uh, didn't get it done today to paint. Uh, but again, the only difference that it really makes is that sometimes I have to add more water to my paints and, um, and my paints dry faster on this plate. But, meh, you know, say lovey. <laughs> just kind of, uh, you know, depends on how much time you've got or if you've got the resources, you know, different things like that. All right, there is a really hard aspect on this back side underneath of this wing that I'm going to need to get. Ugh, there we go. Okay, got that. So that was a little challenging, but that's okay. Um, luckily, it's mostly just for my own sanity because no one's probably going to be looking at my griffin that closely. But my brain tells me that it needs to be painted. <laughs> okay, I'm liking that. All right, so you may on your miniature still see that there is some brown showing through on um, some of the, the creases of your miniature. And that is absolutely okay. Because again, if we think about our reference photos or if you want to look them back up again, they, um, the lion is not just a solid color. He's got depth to him. He's got muscle. Um, and I will, when we're done with, um, more aspects of our miniature, I'm going to go in and talk about, um, um, inking. And I didn't bring any specific inks, so I will show you how to kind of do your own inking but I want you to probably watch me before you try it yourself because it doesn't always turn out the way you want and sometimes it does take some practice. Um, so if you like the way your miniature looks at the end before we talk about inking, then maybe just watch, don't do it, um, and you can practice on something else. But if you're up for just trying and experimenting, then you can try it yourself as well. So. Again, we'll do that a little bit later when we get closer to the end. We'll we'll do some inking on um, on our creature to give it just a little bit more depth. But right now, we're going to be okay with just saying, yep, there's some brown from our undercoat showing up into some of our creases that gives our critter some of that depth, okay? So when we do inking later, it'll give it even more depth but right now we're just gonna leave it as that brown color. All right, so I'm pretty happy with just my second coat there um, for most of my miniature. 
I may go back and touch up a few extra places later on, but really I'm pretty happy with where that looks right now. <clears throat> and so I'm gonna rinse my brush and I'm actually not gonna do my highlights right now. Again, I'm gonna leave that until later so that I can make the best call based on my entire miniature and not just like what's painted so far. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the wings now. And the wings, I'm going to use this like rusty brown color that I have. It's the same one that I used earlier for the talons. Okay, so I'm gonna pull that back out. Now again, if you are deciding that you want to do some other type of eagle, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're wanting to do some other type of eagle, you absolutely can use different aspects, different colors. And, and honestly, if we look at the actual eagles um, photos that we were looking at earlier, um, I'm gonna end up using a more reddish brown for my eagle than what an actual eagle has. Um, a lot of times eagles do have darker feathers on top. And so it's almost more of a, a black almost color for, for eagles um, top feathers. But I am going to actually use um, this reddish brown for the top part of my um, griffin. And then I'll use a lighter kind of version for the bottom. Um, but I'm not going to go all the way to that black color that a lot of times you find on bald eagles. Just a artist choice, really. Just, I like, I like this concept of a griffin better, um, being slightly different, even though there's aspects that are realistic to an eagle, just like having kind of this different aspect to it. And I just think this brown is going to be really pretty on it okay um actually i do think since this brush can hold its shape pretty well and this wingspan is massive so for a miniature so instead of going back to my small brush i am going to go ahead and still use my big brush for this okay um if you do not feel comfortable with that use whatever brush you would like I have just gotten accustomed to using my bigger brush for my bigger miniatures, even for more detailed kind of work. So, so that is what I'm gonna use. All right, so I am brushing this over the wings and I'm being a little generous with it, but um, I don't mind that reddish, that dark reddish color showing through right now because um, I just I think it's gonna be a pretty kind of um, attraction to its wings so I'm not necessarily trying to get into every nook and cranny I am just giving it a nice coat just so that it um, it looks more brown than it looks red. But again, just like I was talking about with my dog, which you can just sometimes see that just beautiful brown fur underneath. I want my griffin to just sometimes, you can see, depending on that angle, you can see this little red aspect in its feathers to almost be just like that little, um, little fluff underneath of bird feathers and that's just what color it happens to be okay all right I'm liking that pretty well let's do the other one okay and i'm not going to leave it this flat brown we are going to do highlights and these feathers are going to be just amazing for dry brushing so I am very much looking forward to that. I enjoy dry brushing. I actually learned dry brushing from my grandmother when I was a kid because she painted ceramics when I was growing up. Um, and that's actually what she did for a living is she would 
paint ceramics and go to different um, conventions and festivals and such. And she would sell her ceramics that she's painted. And my grandfather would fire them for her and things like that and seal them. Um, and she taught me how to dry brush. I just really have always enjoyed it. And it just gives, it's just a quick way to give some depth to whatever it is you're painting. Um, now, something I will say, the trick with dry brushing is that um, you do have to have some texture on your miniature. Um, you can't really, you can't really dry brush a flat surface. So um, there are, for those of you that have, you know, like looked at miniatures for, for several years, uh, um, as they started making more plastic miniatures rather than the, the pewter miniatures, they have, the first plastic ones that came out had very less detail. You know, they were um, quite obviously more, um, I don't know, almost blobby. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it, I guess. But they just, they just had less detail in them, um, unfortunately. And so uh, they would often not give a whole lot of um, structure to those of us that are not great at painting on flat surfaces. I'm not much for um, 2D painting and making it look realistic. I'm not very good at it. And so for those miniatures, those, um, go ahead and flip us over here. Um, for those first plastic miniatures that they started coming out with that just had such little detail, like they didn't really have eye sockets. They just had places for eyes. Um, it was hard for me to actually make them look realistic because there was no detail in them. But a lot of these plastic miniatures that they have now are a lot more detailed and they're really, really nice. Um, WizKids is doing a great job with, I think at least, with their unpainted miniatures and giving them so much detail that it makes it really fun to paint them. Um, and then Reaper's coming out with this like dark bones or something like that. I can't remember what it's called, but they're coming out with some really awesome stuff. Um, people are 3D printing things now that are really awesome, um, especially like the resin 3D printing. It's really, really nice to paint on those because it shows so much detail. So that's really cool. Anyway, lots of different different things to consider when you're picking out a miniature for yourself, you know? But, all right, we've got a lot of this wingspan covered, but I am running out of paint again, which it's gonna happen. So, you know, you just kind of do what you can. Um, I am liking this reddish brown color on top of this burgundy. I'm really happy with that, honestly. So I'm really glad that's the color I went with. So I picked these out knowing that I had kind of used them together before, but sometimes things don't always come together on every miniature, you know, so it just, it kind of varies sometimes. So sometimes you're just taking a risk, but I will say, um, at least anytime I have painted, I've always used acrylic paints, um, on my miniatures. I know some people do use oil, but I can't give you any tips there. I have no idea. <laughs> can barely use oil on a piece of paper, let alone <laughs> a miniature. So uh, anyway, so I use acrylic and uh, I really like the acrylic because you can layer it um, very, very easily. And uh, so if you end up not liking the color that you've used, just layer over top of it and, and start again, you know? So. Um, obviously there's always a, only a certain number of times that you can do that, but you know, if I didn't like this reddish brown, I could go with something else. I could paint back over it and the acrylic that I've used, um, would not, because I've not globbed on my paint, I've actually, you know, thinned it out and watered it down. Um, it would allow me to not lose my detail and still be able to put that other coat on. 
All right, I do think I'm gonna need some more of this color. So again, I'm gonna rinse my paintbrush off because I don't want it sitting out with paint on it. I don't want it to start to dry or anything like that. So um, just washing my paintbrush off, laying that down. Okay, let's pull our little rust, rustish brown out. There we go. There we are. I'm just gonna get a little extra on there just in case we need to cover another section. Okay. All right. Add some water. Go. Stir, 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 stir. <laughs> Okay, there we go. All right, again, that's mm, a little wet. Okay, all right, so let's get back in here, put some more of this on here. Um, so I have gotten some of this brown onto a few pieces of the yellow, and that's okay. We're not necessarily done with the yellow. We're gonna go back and, and do more on it too. Um, so don't fret if you have done that, that is okay. But you may have used, uh, you may have moved to a smaller brush and so maybe you didn't have that problem. So, um, but I'm not stressing over it. I'm gonna go back through and fix that yellow here in just a little bit. I probably should have been just a tad more cautious, but eh, it'll be all right. Just like I said before, layering, layering, layering. I'm just gonna layer on top of things until they are what I want them to be. Or at least close. <laughs> All right, there we go. Okay, I think I've gotten most of that. <clears throat> There's a little on his chest that I wanna overlap. So let's go ahead and do that there we go okay there we go all right so i'm liking that for him so far okay i am going to go ahead and go back to that yellow and just touch up some of my spots So that way, if I end up having to put another coat on them, on those spots again, um, I have plenty of time to do that. So I've just taken my yellow back, just brushing right over. Yeah, I'm probably gonna have to go over that tail again, but that's okay. I've got some pieces on the underbelly. Let's just touch up that little piece right there. And on this rib cage, that's okay. And I'm gonna end up going back to the belly anyway because just like we looked at before, when I specifically looked up lion bellies, <laughs> um, the bellies are gonna be kind of a lighter color anyway. So I'm actually gonna want to mix some white with this orchid in a little bit and paint that belly a lighter color. So we will do that later as well okay all right i think i got the gist of my colors there so my other thing that i want to kind of consider is pulling some of this yellow back up into these feathers but i really want to, to have a very light amount of paint on my brush to do this and so i'm gonna i'm gonna i've wiped off a good chunk of my paint and I'm gonna start from the back and move up into these feathers that are on the front side, this brown color. And what that does, there we go. What that does is um, wherever you lay your brush down first, that is where the most paint is gonna be. And then as you brush your, or do, this, do a stroke of your brush, the paint is gonna get lighter. So I don't know how well you can see this yellow on my hand, but 
it's darker here and as it goes down it gets lighter and so what I'm doing is the part that is fully this color I am starting my brush back there and moving up so that way when the paint actually hits the brown it's the thinner part um, or it's a thinner amount of the paint and so it's more likely to then blend with that brown color and I can do the same thing if I take some more of this brown and I didn't fully wash off my paintbrush because I don't mind these colors mixing now because that's specifically what I'm trying to do so I'm just going to get some of this excess water off because I don't want it to be watery I just want a light amount of paint okay and then I'm going to go from inside the brown and then kind of stroke out towards the yellow and that's going to help us blend okay so deeper in coming closer to that yellow all right it's not perfect but uh, but I think it works I think it works for us okay I'm gonna attempt <laughs> attempt to do this a little bit for the underside as well um, I will tell you this is gonna be more challenging because of the angle that you have to do this at but uh, but kind of worth a shot at least just a little bit um, again with tabletop painting just kind of sometimes just the the tattest bit of effort can just make it look just that much nicer and that much more finished even if the result is not what you actually had intended um, it can just give it just a little bit a little bit extra something okay all right I'm liking that that's not too bad it's a little too much paint on my brush I think let me go back to the dark end of it pull back this way okay all right not bad okay I'm not I'm not disappointed with that <laughs> so we're gonna stop there all right there we go okay all right um so um i think i'm gonna go ahead and do the talons next let me pull this orangish color that i had intended to use so it is more of an orange than my orchid kind of color is it's a little deeper maybe where my orchid is a little more pale um so i don't want it to be the same but it is in a similar color family just a little bit in the browns and reds that i'm kind of trying to go with okay all right so there's that i've got my clean brush I'm gonna get a little bit of water on it put that into my orange there we go um i think i'm gonna go back down to my a smaller brush here to try and um, get a little more uh, delicate with how I am painting this so I'm just gonna mix in that water should have done that already oh well <laughs> okay all right there we go all right okay, that's looking pretty good <clears throat> all right Okay, we're going to mm, that's a little thinner than I had anticipated so I'm going to keep this side a little thicker I got a little too much water in that corner of the paint droplet that I put on there so okay that's a little better all right um, and a lot of just kind of knowing that is just practice you know you have to feel the paint coming off of your brush how does it look going on to your miniature you know um and like how much is it covering if it's being really thin and falling straight into the cracks and not covering anything except for the creases then you probably know you've got too much water um and some people are more comfortable with uh multiple multiple layering a lot of like professionals will make their paint super super thin 
and just do layer after layer after layer. It's uh, almost like a glazing technique. Um, and so if, if that is what you're comfortable with, that is not a problem at all. It's just not what I'm comfortable with. So that is not how I like to do it. <laughs> all right. So there's lots of little crevices in his little claws. So we're really got to try and get into all of those. Um, when we get to the point of doing more details on his claws, we're probably looking at not being able to dry brush as much. We're going to have to be more intentional on his talons and his claws here uh, because it's not like a large surface like it is up here and there's a lot of angles to it. So if we just try and dry brush over it, it's not going to um, keep the same effect as it will on the wings. That's gonna make it look like nice and natural and highlight. It's gonna make it look, um, it's gonna give it some weird angles is what it's really gonna do. So we will probably have to do more detailed highlighting on the feet rather than um, the dry brush that we're gonna do on the rest of the miniature. So, but that is okay. All right, there we go. Let's back down there. So um, again, just like with the backside, this is a very lighter color. It's a, a yellowish orange kind of color. And so you can really see that undertone quite a bit on this first layer, this first go around that we did. Um, now I didn't really work on getting the talons or any like the actual nails um, because I plan to do those black, but I also was not careful necessarily. So if I did get some of this orange color on them, that's fine. It's not a big deal because I'm going to just paint them black later. Um, but I was slightly cautious just because I have a smaller brush so I can be. Okay, all right, so I'm gonna have to, I need to really quit playing with this. I'm gonna have to do a second layer on those talons anyway. So I'm just gonna let those dry and move on to the head and then I'm gonna come back for a second layer. Um, the, the talons aren't drying as quickly because they're a smaller surface, and so I didn't have um, the time that I did on the back side where I had you know, lots of different areas to cover, and so it dried a lot quicker because there was more to cover, where these are pretty small, and so it didn't take me as much time. So they still need some time to dry, and I don't want to play with them too quickly. Okay. So that being said, if you um, if you just have white at hand, then you can go ahead and just apply white straight to um, your Griffin's head. Um, I might recommend like applying lightly at first, maybe even dry brushing. What I'm gonna do though instead is I have this off-white color. It's it's very very close. It's uh, you probably can't even tell on the camera because of the light that I have on shining on it but I have this off-white, and so I'm gonna use this off-white first. So if you don't have off-white, you might just take a break and watch for a second. Um, and if you do have kind of an off-white or a cream color, I would say grab that now. <clears throat> so a very light off-white or cream color, okay? Okay go. I need to use my clean paper towel again. There we go. Okay, I am going to go back to my bigger brush just because I just, I think it's going to be better for what I'm wanting to do here. Okay, so I am kind of flattening out my brush a little bit because I would kind of rather have this wider surface here. If you have the the wider surface on this other one that I talked about before, you feel free to use that one. Um, I'm still going to go ahead and use this brush and just kind of flatten it for myself to where it has more of a 
flat edge and a point kind of on one side. Okay. All right, I'm gonna take my off-white here and I'm just putting it on the end of my brush. Okay, not filling my brush with it. I want it to be pretty light. And I'm just gonna go over very lightly. I'm not necessarily dry brushing, but it is, is pretty close to dry brushing. I am not afraid of getting into the, the creases a little bit, but I also would like some of that yellow color to still come through just a tad. So, so I'm just gonna kind of lightly brush over these. Okay. Being a little bit more generous just around the face area and less so around his lower, lower parts of this head. And sometimes this is trial and error. I'm not incredibly happy with what I've got so far. And so I may go back and do more, but it's always easier to go back and do more than it is to do more at first and then not like what you've done. So, so just FYI. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish covering his head with this. Again, just trying to leave some of that yellow showing through just a tad. And we may, I'll see what how I feel at the end, but I may even do a little bit of darker brown inking underneath, maybe kind of showing a slightly more juvenile age to my griffin. But again, I'll see how I feel at the end and if I like how that yellow is showing through. Okay, so this side's gonna be a little trickier. Gonna really make sure I don't have as much paint because um, I don't want, I don't want to coat him in white or this off white that I'm using. Okay, now I am not being cautious of his eyes or his beak because I'm not really worried about that because going darker from off-white is going to be way easier. <laughs> so I'm not really concerned about that. Okay, just going to add a little bit more of this to the back of his head. Okay, I'm liking that pretty well. All right. There we go. I'm going to do more on this far side. I don't think I got quite enough like I wanted to on there and then down. It's just really hard to get into this crease right here between the wing and the head. And so I just wanna try and get in there just a little bit more. There, okay, that makes me happier. Okay, I'm still not super pleased with how much yellow is showing through on the side here. So I'm just gonna put it on just a tad thicker. There we go. And I am letting this kind of peter down into his chest feathers a little bit and that is okay. Because again, I can always cover that back up and it does make sense that some of those feathers might be a little lighter by his neck. Um, some of those white feathers can kind of go down into to their chests, to eagles' chests. So, okay. All right. Okay. I think I'm liking that pretty well. And we may not end up being able to tell a big difference. Again, if you have the white or the off uh, off white, I mean. Uh, if you have the off-white or a cream color, we may not be able to tell as much, but I am going to go ahead and go over this again with my actual white color, okay? Um, I feel like it makes it makes a little bit of a difference, and so, um, so I want to go ahead and do that, okay? All right, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to my dry brush brush that I've been wanting that I'm gonna use uh, that I like to use 
instead. So that way I really am dry brushing and not trying to get as much of my actual white white into those creases. So I do still have some of that white on my palette and I had not added water to this white on my palette here, okay? I had added white off to the side to make this gray, but I did not actually add water to this white itself. So if you have added water to your white, I recommend that you get a new, um, a new spot of white that is not watered down because when we're dry brushing, we really don't want our paint to be watered down. We want it to be thicker, but we also don't want as much on our brush. So what I've done, <laughs> you don't have to do this on your hand. You can do it on a paper towel. I probably should show you the proper way to do it actually. Um, I just always use my hand for everything. Um, anyway, so I get some of my paint on my paintbrush and then I will brush it back and forth on my paper towel until there's very little on my actual paintbrush. And again, you may not be able to see a difference if you use that cream color or that off-white, but if you didn't have that and you only had the white, so this would be the first time you're touching your Griffin's head um, with the white, then you should be able to see a pretty big difference. So I'm, what I'm doing, because these bristles, I'm not really worried about them, I'm holding my paintbrush sideways over the griffin and going like against the um, direction of the detail. So the detail goes down and around the, the neck of my griffin. So I am going sideways and up, okay, when I'm doing my dry brushing. Sideways and up. There you go. And then on his head, it goes kind of um, this direction parallel to my body. So I am putting my paintbrush and going um, perpendicular from my body. Okay. Let's move him just a little bit. Put a little bit more paint on there. And then brush the back of his head. Now, if you don't like that yellow color <laughs> that I've had you do on his head, then just go ahead and paint his whole head white. It'd be absolutely fine. And then again, I will show you how to ink later. And if you decide, you know what, or you want a little bit of more dark on there, you can just ink his head later. All right. Okay. So. Again, I don't know if you can tell it, but I can see the difference in my white versus my off-white, and it's really making me happy. <laughs> I, uh, I'm really liking how that part specifically is turning out. Okay, yeah, that feels pretty good. I'm liking that a lot. Okay, and I can still see some of that yellow, that orchidy color that I've used on his backside. And although it's it seems more pale now um, than the backside does, um, you can still see it. And so ideally what this should be doing for you or anybody that looks at it is that it should you should be able to, uh, your eye should be able to draw the connection from that tone of that yellow to this back here and see that it's within the same family even though it looks lighter up here than it does back here. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm pretty happy with that head. I'm liking that pretty well. Let's wash this off. Again, always wash your paintbrushes. Don't leave it in the water. Okay. There we go. All right. I'm going to go back to his feet. I'm going to go back to my, my orangey color for his uh, talons, claws, whatever they are, this front side there. Back to this orange color and put another coat on, just like we did on the back side, to start covering up some of those darker areas that we don't really want to see that dark brown that we had before. Okay. It's gonna be nice for it to peek through in some of those areas, because again, if you pull up your reference photos, if you looked up eagles, 
and you pull up some of those reference photos, you can see that their talons are not, or their leg, their feet, are not necessarily always so bright. Every once in a while, you do see some that have like those those bright feet, but a lot of times you see that they are actually more of kind of like a, a darker kind of color. And so, uh, so I don't necessarily want to cover up all those dark spots. I just don't want it to look muddy. So I'm just trying to get enough on here that we can see that these these feet have some detail, that they actually look like feet. And they're not just blobs at the end of his legs. But some of that dark in, uh, in the shadows is perfectly fine. So hopefully you can kind of already see how putting that second coat on this foot specifically has just made it pop so much more than this back one here. All right, let's go ahead and add, add our color onto that one too. There we go. It's giving it a little bit more, more spark. There we go. Okay. And then don't forget to get on the underside. That is easy to forget because it's not where we usually look. But don't forget to pull that color back in underneath as well. And I've really gotten quite a good chunk of orangish yellow on the base of this miniature. But that's okay because, again, we only put that base coat on there so that we had some kind of re color reference um, for our miniature rather than just being this blobby gray color, okay? So, so if you get, get paint on the, on the base that we've already put one coat on, it is absolutely okay. Nothing to fret over. Okay, much better. All right, that's looking good. It's looking good. All right, so, you know, I forgot about that tail again. It's just hiding back there. I keep forgetting about that tail. So what I should have done is put this brown that I put on the feathers onto that tail. So I still have some on my palette, so it's not too late by any means. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Now, I'm gonna be fairly generous with this color, but again, just like on the wings, if some of that maroon shows through, or that burgundy color shows through, I won't be mad about it because it's gonna give it just that pretty kind of aspect of giving it some depth and showing off that undercoat that's gonna make it look a little bit more natural. I've also got, I don't know if you can see it based on the, the angle that I have the miniature at, but I also got some yellow on that tail as well. Um, and again, that's okay, we're putting another coat on it, but something that that is going to do, so if you have um, some spots where you've put that, or where you accidentally got that yellow from the body onto the tail, you're going to notice that when you put this brown on top of it, it's not going to be as dark in that spot as it will be everywhere else that only that red color is. Um, now that's okay. Um, if you, if you don't mind the way that looks, that's perfectly fine. Cause honestly, it's kind of like a highlight. So every once in a while you'll find like animals, um, or people even, We'll have different spots. I'm just going up and touching up some other areas that I flubbed up on, just FYI is what I'm doing now. But um, you'll notice that animals and people will sometimes have like spots in their hair, their fur, their feathers that um, that is a little bit different. You know, um, it's a different, it doesn't match the, the pattern. We all have, you know, little quirks or different aspects and things like that. and um, and there's nothing wrong, you know, with that. So just like when, um, when I was a kid, when I would go outside and play in the sun and all that jazz, my hair would get so much lighter. Um, you can probably see now it's pretty dark, but when I was a kid, I was super blonde 
during the summer because of being out in the sun. And the sun would bleach my hair. Well, I don't get out in the sun as much anymore. <laughs> and so it doesn't get bleached like it used to get bleached. And so it just keeps getting darker and darker. Um, but, I mean, that happens with animals. The more they're in the sun, the more it changes the color um, of them in, in their fur and their feathers and whatever. And so if you have, you know, a piece that maybe you put white on on accident and then you go back over it and it doesn't go as dark that's okay it doesn't need to be perfect um if you feel like it looks very unnatural then just keep keep layering put a thin layer on let it dry put another thin layer on let it dry and then just kind of see how it goes from there until it gets to a point that you feel like it looks a little bit more natural but again just emphasizing don't be afraid of accidents or like small mistakes like that because you can you can play into those aspects of your of your critter okay okay so we're getting to a point that we've got a pretty decent looking griffin here all right so there's a couple of different things we could do um, we could pull black and go ahead and paint those talons that might give us a better look about like what we're doing. Um, another thing is painting its uh, beak um, and then its eyes, of course. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and start with the talons. So I'm gonna do that real quick. Got my black here. Find another spot in my palette. Put some black out. I don't need a whole lot of black because I'm really just planning to do the talons and then maybe a few um, places for a little bit of detail, but that's really it. Okay. Ugh, and I was bad. I have been telling you guys to just keep cleaning your brushes, and I didn't clean it that last time. Okay. There we go. All right. Um, okay. So this time, I don't think I'm going to add any water to my black for the talons because I want it to be a pretty solid coating of black. Because if you look at an eagle's talons, so again, I'm just referencing my photos that I've got up um, on my screen. They are typically, I mean, they're kind of a darker charcoal gray, but really they're pretty black. So, so I'm going to go ahead and just not water down my black color and just, just do a straight black. If we don't like it, we can always let it dry and alter it. Okay. So, let's grab... wiped up too much there we go all right so I've got my my regular size brush that I like to use and I'm just gonna go in and just ever so delicately again I don't care if I get it on the base but I don't really want to get this black on the feet because this will be harder to cover up not impossible just harder so I'm going to just try and turn my miniature, make sure I'm getting underneath as well, while also still just being cautious. Again, we're painting for tabletop, so we're not painting for perfection. So if you get to a point where you're like, you know what, that looks okay, <laughs> I'm going to stop there. There's nothing wrong with that, okay? So um, just being careful. Just using the very tip to just ever so slightly follow the ridge of the claw and then brushing out away from the body. So I really like to do the closest to the parts that I don't want to mess up first and then brush away from them. Okay. That talon needs just a little bit more right here. So let's go ahead and do that. There we go. Okay, there we go. I'm liking that. <clears throat> All right, following the crease with the point of my brush. 
all around. Oof, this one's gonna be harder because I gotta turn and go underneath. Just be careful. Use the table to your advantage and um, steady your elbows. If you need to stick your elbows on the table and fold your arms like closer together, use that to stabilize yourself. If you if you're starting to shake, you know. So, rules of the lunch table don't apply here. <laughs> there we go. Okay, I think that one's looking good. All right, another challenging one is going to be this back talon. Okay, again, just going across where it meets the body, where it meets the foot, and then brushing down and away. Getting on the base is okay. I'm not worried about that. All right. Spin them around. We got to go inside. Don't forget the back side of the feet. All right. I'm going to I'm going to flip them upside down here cuz I think that's going to give me a better angle and I'm bracing my fingers cuz I do shake sometimes, but I'm bracing my fingers on the back side of the miniature here. And just ever so lightly getting right up to that crease and then brushing away. Okay, and I did miss, oh, I'm gonna go back through those middle legs here. I did miss just the top part of that talon. All right, there we go, okay. All right, one foot done. <laughs> All right, now let's do the other one. Okay, let's do the harder one first. We're gonna do this back one. And now I'm really starting to see some of those spots that I uh, didn't trim up from before. He's got one on his claw there. Luckily, since we're just doing a flat black, it shouldn't be too noticeable um, in the final product. All right, there we go. Pulling that forward. Doing our line. Pulling it forward or pulling it away from the body. There we go. All right, there's the back one. Ideally, these front ones should be a little easier. I go around. Around. Pulling away. And if you don't like the flat black, you can do, you know, you could do the, you could make yourself a gray color. Maybe you already have a gray color that you want to do. Um, maybe your griffin is owned by someone who likes to paint nails. And so maybe they have a bright color. I was wrong. This one's harder to get to. There we go. Okay. <laughs> maybe I'll do the underside of these front ones first. <laughs> All right. Let's do... Um, I'm just going to do this underside here, up against, and then brush away. And then around, brush away. And then around, brush away. There we go. Okay, one more left. On this at least and then we got to do the paws in the back <laughs> brush around brush around Oop, I see a little spot that I missed there on that one I think I got a little bit on the back end of this one that I need to touch up and then I think I should be done with those. There we go. There are our talons. All right, so the back paws, I'm gonna go ahead and just do those nails in black as well. Again, just showing that even though this is two creatures melded together, it's still the same creature. So I'm gonna go ahead and do those nails in black as well. They are very much smaller, so just make sure you know like where the nail 
begins and um, next to the paw. So just being cautious of that and where you're placing that piece. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and do some of these, these undersides here. I can tell that my black is kind of drying out because it's not wanting to flow as nicely as I would like it to. So I may have to freshen my black up. Otherwise, I'm going to have to add water to it. And that makes me nervous because I don't want this black flowing to any creases. I, I want it to stay where I place it and nowhere else. So I think what I'm going to do real quick is just freshen up my black. So that way it is not um, tacky. All right, let's pull my black back out. Put a little more on my tray. There we go. Okay, back to it. Pull some of that fresh black. And I'm going to just be cautious about where that nail is. Oh, that's flowing so much nicer. Yeah, that makes me a lot happier. There we go. Now, um, again, not the end of the world, but do be a little more cautious on this back side here because this black is not going to be very forgiving with that yellow if you go too far in. Um, not impossible, just challenging. So do Oof, man yeah some of these are pretty hard to reach so <clears throat> I would say if you're not feeling very confident or comfortable um, with some of these spots that I'm trying to reach in real deep on you might just try and get what is easy to access and then try and use um, decorative pieces on your base to cover that up so like if you if you have green stuff you can create some grassy or flowery looks uh, looking pieces to add to your miniature um, if you have like terrain pieces you could add terrain pieces to the bottom of your miniature and that will hide some of like the the feet mess ups. <laughs> I have definitely done that before. <laughs> you just add a little bit of something to the bottom and it, it helps it like look like it's out in nature in the world. Um, but then also kind of hide some of those little impossible to fix flaws that you maybe don't want to be noticed. Okay. I think I'm pretty happy with those backside claws now. Okay, um, this is something that you may not be interested in doing, but I am going to go ahead and do it again, just for a little bit of realism here. So you'll notice on this back paw here that you can see some of the pads on the feet of those paws. Um, so if you still have things up, you could look back at some of your pictures that we were looking at before um, at lion's feet. Um, so some of the belly pictures that we had up showed their paws and they are typically like a grayish brown kind of color. But again, with miniatures, you can kind of get away with doing some different colors. And so I'm actually just gonna take this real dark brown color that I had, not adding any water to it or anything like that. I'm just gonna take some of that brown and I'm just gonna ever so lightly touch on those bottom pads of my Griffin's feet to just kind of make it show that those are the pads of his feet and not just some random fur sticking out the bottoms. Okay. All right. So it doesn't have to be much. 
I'm not really making it very detailed or anything. I am going to go ahead and try and reach in and do this back one that you can kind of see. But again, if you're not comfortable with that, don't even fuss with it because I doubt people are going to even think about that aspect of your, your griffin. Okay. So, so don't fuss with it if it's not bothering you. I just really want that to show that those are the pads of his paws. Okay, perfect. So I just, just dabbed that on. I don't even know if you'll be able to see it. I can see it in person. Oops. I can see it in person, but I don't know if you can even see just the little pads of his feet under those claws. But I can see it, so it makes me feel better. <laughs> okay, all right. So we're looking good here. Um, let's go ahead and do the beak so that we have something started there and his eyes. And then I think after that, we will start to do the highlights and do some dry brushing and just wrap ourselves up, okay? Um, okay, so let's go ahead and do the beak. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use this orange color that we used on the claws here for his beak as well. And again, going back to our reference photos, if, um, if you still have yours up, or if you even looked up any, um, if you go back to um, the eagles that we were looking at, you can see that the eagle's beaks are actually um, a orangish color, very similar, orangish yellow, very similar to their feet. Um, usually a lighter color than their feet, but still pretty close, pretty similar to the same color. Um, and so with our feet, with our feet, a little more color through here, with our feet, we had a brown color underneath of it. So it makes this yellowy orange look darker. But for our beak, we have a white color that is underneath of it. And so when we use this orange on top of it, it's going to make it look lighter. Um, plus it's next to white and this is next to brown and that's going to also play with our, with our eyes as well. Um, I am not adding any water to this because again, on the beak, I want this to stay where I put it and just be there. So I'm not adding any water to it. And just like I mentioned before, um, yellow and oranges, um, at least brighter oranges are a lot thinner of paint to begin with. So we're going to need to do a few coats on this anyway. So I'm not worried about watering it down. I'm okay with it being thicker and uh, a little more aggressive in its location on my miniature. Okay, there we go. I'm just ever so slightly trying to use the side. This is again, my thin traditional brush that I use using the thin side of my brush to just kind of go along the beak's edge. I need to do his underside of his mouth here. And then a little on the corners. Um, I did not get the edges over here, even though I got them on the other side. So um, if you have the same griffin that I do, then you'll notice on one side of his beak, um, it is not very detailed and it looks like the feathers go straight up to the inside of his mouth where the other side, this side has a clear definition of the beak all the way through. Um, so this side, I just have to cautiously and tentatively put just my own little lines there to kind of give it that shape that the other side has. Um, so you can't always just trust the uh, shape of what you see. Sometimes you have to kind of make your own little path on your miniature as well. And so that just goes back to the molding issues that we talked about before. Um, when, you, when you get a um, plastic mold and even sometimes metal molds do it too. Um, they don't always have the, the right details. Sometimes they have flaws, different things like that. So sometimes you've got to just kind of do things your own way a little bit. Okay, <clears throat> so I've got that coat on there of the for the beak. 
and this is not something that you need to do if you're not comfortable with this kind of detail but um, something I want to show you and what I want to do myself I'm gonna go black back to my black color that I did not add water to and I am going to there's these little holes for nostrils and I am going to ever so slightly just dab the end of my brush to make a little nostril okay I'm gonna attempt to do it on this side too okay mm, that is not quite in the right spot challenging but not impossible to fix so I rinsed my brush left a little bit of water in it and honestly I even used a little saliva <laughs> don't eat the paint <laughs> but uh, if you've rinsed your brush sometimes um, your saliva can actually be useful for moving paint around on your miniature um, again probably not something that you maybe want to do but it does help sometimes okay all right so I got that black to come off I retouched up with my orangish yellow color I'm gonna try again I'm gonna try again okay just ever so slightly on my tip okay let me see where my other nostril is mm, okay all right that was probably my fault the first time around because I didn't really check where that first nostril was and misplaced okay you know what that's close enough for me <laughs> all right um i am going to use my dark red for the inside of his oh actually before i do that i'm sorry another thing again do not do this if you don't feel comfortable i am just ever so slightly gonna take my black just a thin line of it and again if you're using the same griffin i am or some other griffins probably have this too there is like a piece on its nose that is like a like a flap that goes over the actual like boned beak part and i am going to attempt oh, sorry i talked too long and now my paint dried out i'm going to attempt to do a little line on that to show that it's there Another good color to do this in, if you're if you're nervous about this, is um, that brown, that dark brown that we have. That could also be a good option for doing this. Okay, I'm gonna go over the top a little bit. There we go. I don't know that I'm crazy happy with it, but it's not awful either. So I'm gonna end up leaving this but we will we'll see how it turns out. Okay, so it's not terrible, it's not great, but it's okay. Um, something I could do to kind of um, even this out is I could even do a little line here where his beak meets his feathers and that could help give some definition to what I'm trying to do here. Not sure I really like that either. I'm going to go back with some orange and just kind of brush over that. It's not going to make it go away, but it will make it more faint, which is fine with me. I'm gonna do it on his beak too. So it just kind of makes it a little more pale. So it's not as bright. And I think it's the brightness that, it's, that I'm not liking. Okay, okay, that's a little better. All right, another thing real quick with the black before I move on. Um, actually, you know what? I don't want to use black for this. I'm going to use a brown, that dark, dark brown that we were using before. I'm going to pull that back out. And I'm 
going to um, put a line around his eyes so that his eyes have some depth to them as well. So, and it will help to give it some, some definition between the white of his feathers and the white of his eyes. Now, um, most, so, so eagles actually will have, um, again, you may need to do some photo referencing. The eagles actually, most of their eye is the yellow, but for a, like a more realistic, pleasing look, you still want to do a white undercoat for adding that yellow. So it looks like there's some definition there. Oh, I just picked up my black again. I meant to take that brown. Okay, I'm not adding water to my brown because just like with that black, that black, sorry, um, I do want it to be like where I place it and nowhere else. Okay, so I'm just going to give a little bit of definition around the eye. This is going to be pretty detailed work as well. I'm going to make this line a little thicker just so just so that it uh, is going to show more difference between the feathers and and the eye itself okay okay so it just kind of gives it a little bit more it shows a little bit more definition there okay now I have to try and do this on the other side <laughs> is kind of the more challenging side because of that wing on this side but we can do it we can do it it's just gonna take more patience um, again if you have the miniature I have you might notice this side of his face is a little less um, detail around that eye as the other side does so that also makes it a little bit more challenging because at least the other side he had a real nice um, deep eye socket that showed like exactly where his eye was placed where on this side only the top part is kind of deeper Oof, yeah that was that side's pretty rough I'm not gonna lie to you so I'm gonna have to go back with a white and touch that back up again and I, again uh, mess ups like this are probably gonna take a couple of coats I'm going to start with just adding some white for now, and then once that dries, I'll add a little bit more. But that'll at least get me started. Okay. All right, but he still has he still has the brown around it, um, so that just gives him a little more definition. All right. Okay. I'm going to go back to my off-white for the eyes before I add the yellow, and I'm going to end up using the orchidy color of his backside the orchid type color for his back from his backside for his actual eyes um so let's i'm gonna again i'm gonna take my off-white if you don't have off-white you don't have to use this at all or you can use your regular white um i just i like to use off-white for eyes um because if you actually look at a person's eyes they are hardly ever actually white, pure white. So I do like to use off-white. You can't always tell, but but sometimes there is a difference, especially if you um, have other whites right next to it. You can usually tell a difference pretty well. So, but if you only have white, that is not a problem either. Again, most people don't even realize it. The difference between white and off-white. So I think you will still have an awesome creature once you're done, even if you use regular white. Okay, I've got the whites filled in there. I'm gonna go ahead and put, get some of my orchid color out. Again, I'm not adding water, so I don't really need to add this to my tray. Um, but again, be very cautious with your yellows because a yellow is very thin and it's going to want to pull to our creases and we don't want that. 
I'm just ever so slightly dabbing the eye. I'm not brushing. I'm not, you know, trying to circle. <clears throat> just enough paint on the tip of my brush, and then I just dab. Okay. the other side there we go maybe just a little bit more you know I don't know that this is as bright as I would like it to be I wonder I may layer on okay I'm just gonna try this I'm gonna try and layer on some of that orange over top of the yellow, see if I like it at all. It may be too much orange on his face though. Hmm, it's not bad. I think I'm gonna go with this orange color. It, it looks more yellow on top, like when you put it on top of the yellow, I feel like, so I like that. But, um, Back to what I was mentioning earlier, this is a fantasy creature. Use purple if you want to use purple. <laughs> so whatever whatever color you want to use um, for his eyes, that could be like the small aspect that shows that, hey, this is not actually a real creature. This is a mythological creature, you know? Okay, so now that we've got the yellow on there, We've got an outline around the eye. Now we need the actual pupil itself. And eagles, luckily, actually have a fairly large size pupil. So, um, so even if you make it a little bigger, it's gonna it's gonna look natural. Okay. So, the tricky thing, again, very tip, very tip, and I usually try and wipe off like the side excess of the paint so that I have the sharpest tip I can on my paintbrush. Um, light my finger off there. And then I just want to be able to straight tap the eye. my paint dried just a little bit while I was talking because it did not do the roundness that I wanted. But again, if you look at an eagle's eye, it is definitely more round than any other shape. Okay, there we go. That's pretty good. Okay, I've only done one side so far and I tried to do it at an angle that I felt like the face was looking. So, if you look, again, I don't know how well you can actually see it. So he's kind of like facing this way and down a little bit. So I tried to put the dot um, for his pupil like closer to the front of the eye and kind of angled down a little, like down towards the bottom part of the eye. So the best I could. Okay, that being said, that's only one side, right? So now we still have to do the other side. So something that I have had um, somebody tell me before is that if you look at the face, face on, so fa facing your creature, looking at where your eye is, on, or where your pupil is on one side, try and imagine like where that second pupil would be if you were looking at a person and they were, you know, looking in that direction. And so that's what I try to do the best I can. Um, another way that you can kind of do this instead of this tiny brush that I have, um, you could take a toothpick. Um, I feel like the griffin's eyes are big enough that you could take a toothpick and do this as well. It doesn't always work when you're doing people because their eyes are sometimes a lot smaller and so it's harder to actually... Yeah, actually that doesn't look bad. Um, so it's harder to actually get the toothpick onto a person's eye. I'm just going to touch this one one more time, which I may regret. Nope. Okay, good. All right. Um, 
Yeah, so a toothpick would be harder on like a person's eye, but um, a lot of times with creatures that have larger eyes, you can kind of do that. Um, the owl bear that I had showed you at the beginning, he has much larger, rounder eyes, and I was actually able to do like full brush strokes with him rather than um, uh, than having to do the the dot aspect that I was talking about. Um, so again, just kind of depends on the creature and what technique that you use, but hopefully that helps at least a little bit on that piece. Um, okay, so uh, I feel like we're pretty well done. Oh no, we need to do the mouth, duh. Yep, do the mouth. Okay, so for the mouth, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and put this um, dark red, where did it go? This dark red that we started with on the feathers, I'm gonna put that in its mouth just to kind of give it that dark, deep aspect. And then, like I said, I do have an actual red that I'm going to use as well. All right, so I'm just trying to cover the inside of his mouth the best I can from what I can see that is interior mouth. Something else you may want to do or prefer to do is to use a very dark brown or um, a uh, black color, or maybe you use a mixture thereof, like in the far recesses of the mouth, you use black, and then you use this darker red for, you know, um, the closer pieces to that you can see more, you know, things like that. Um, and again, depending on the creature that you're painting, if you were painting something besides like a, a normal looking creature, then you may want to use a whole nother color, depending on what the interior of their mouths look like. Um, kind of a, a weird thing to say, but if you think about like the interior of like a dog's mouth, um, sometimes they are like the pinkish color. Sometimes um, they have, uh, like, their their mouths are black. Um, there are some dogs, I can't remember which ones they are. They're like big, fluffy dogs, but the inside of their mouth is like a bluish purple color. So anyway, so even real animals have different colors in the interior of their mouths. So, you know, whatever whatever you think is cool or looks neat or whatever you kind of want to do. Um, okay, so I do have this brighter red color that I am gonna do just like just a dab on his tongue. Okay. I probably honestly don't even need this because again, this is tabletop, not not something that's gonna be super fancy in a show or anything like that. So I don't necessarily need to make the mouth look super realistic, but I think it's just fun. It just gives it a little something extra, you know, gives it a little extra detail in what we're doing. So I'm just going to paint the bottom of his mouth like he's got a tongue in there. And I did touch on that orange just a little bit. So let's go ahead and um, I don't. The red and the orange should play okay together, so I'm just gonna go ahead and touch back over this. Um, there we go, okay. All right, maybe just a little bit more orange where I messed up right here at the end. There we go, okay, we have a mouth. <laughs> All right, so our head is pretty well finished. So now let's start looking at what we can do with more detail for the rest of our miniature and wrap this puppy up. Okay, <clears throat> so if we look at the, the claws, the talons, um, or not the actual claws, but the actual feet, um, there are ridges on these feet. And so we can give that a little more depth, a little more detail. So if we do, <clears throat> this orange again I think if we do one more layer of orange right in the places that we want it to be that'll make those areas just a little bit brighter 
Then, um, if we don't like where that lands us, we can add some white to make it even lighter, okay? So let's just see, I'm just going over. So you'll notice on your griffin, there's these patterns over its arms, these like lined patterns over their arm. And so I'm just lightly going over those areas specifically, just on the top here. I don't think it's really having the effect. It's a little brighter, but it's not necessarily having the effect that I want it to. So here's what we're gonna do. Okay, gonna rinse my brush out. And on this one over here, just so you can see the difference, I'm gonna go back to my white. And I don't wanna coat the white on, so I am kind of trying to brush it off a little bit. Okay, and I'm just gonna ever so lightly go across these with this white. Okay, there, put a little bit on there. This is almost like dry brushing, but again, I'm just trying to follow the angle. So instead of going against the angle where dry brushing goes against it, I'm trying to follow it so that I'm just touching those, those one areas that I want this to kind of be on his claws. And I am gonna do a little bit on this back one here, although it probably wouldn't necessarily be as light, I'm still going to do a little bit on that back side. Okay, we're gonna add just a little bit more. Okay, and so you may end up just liking having that white on there and that's okay if that's what you end up doing. But now that that is on there, I'm gonna rinse my brush out again. I'm gonna go take back my orange that I was using earlier. Okay, again, I don't want too terribly much. And that should be dry because I did not use very much. I'm just gonna go over that white. And we don't have to be as careful with this orange because the rest of our foot is already orange. So we're not real worried about it. There we go, okay. Um, hopefully you can tell, um, I know I can. Oh, I forgot this backside, there we go. Um, I know I can, but hopefully you can tell as well that this back one is now lighter than this front one um, because that white underneath just makes this top orange pop just a little bit more. So I really liked how that one turned out. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and put my white on top of this one over here. And I'm gonna do the same thing to that one. I think I need some more white. So let me grab, let me grab that real quick because my white is starting to... You could also do this with your off-white if that's what you have handy. Um, either of those colors will uh, really help this this orangish color pop out more, okay? Okay. Just kind of lining those just like I did before. Just following the, the pattern on his feet. Okay. And then a little bit on the back side here. There we go. Maybe a little on the side. A little on this side. There we go. Okay. And then I put that on light enough that it should be dry by now. So orange back okay and just go right over it again the rest of the foot is orange already so we're not worried about getting the orange in places it shouldn't be necessarily on the foot do be careful around the feathers up top but otherwise we should be okay Okay, there we go. 
And I just think that gives those just a little bit more depth. If you are um, not happy with the highlights themselves, you can always still use the white or an off-white to make additional highlights. Or the other thing that you can do, let me grab, where did it go? The dark brown again. Okay, let's pull this brush. I'm gonna put just a just a little bit of the dark brown. And I'm gonna take some of my clean water and mix it in. And I'm gonna mix it so that it's pretty thin. Okay. So you'll notice this is a lot thinner. You see how it flows off the edge there? It's a lot thinner than what we had before when we were doing our base coat, okay? So I'm gonna take this thin, very, very thin, dry some of that end off, because I don't want it to do too much. Okay, and then I'm gonna just lay it over, maybe dab off a few things, lay it over some of my creases like in my, between my claws and some of these wrinkles that I've got going on. And then you may end up having to do the light highlights again and that's okay. Um, it does not, it won't hurt anything to go back and do those highlights again. But doing kind of this very light wash will then fill in some of those creases for you and just kind of show that depth. So this is my off way of inking. <laughs> so if you don't actually own inked colors, if you own inked colors, you can just use those to do this. But if you don't own any ink colors, because painting is expensive, and we can't always have everything um, you can just water down your colors and do this brush to them okay it doesn't always turn out the way you want so this is something that I definitely would say be cautious of it's definitely something that um, you know you may want practice with before you start doing it because if if you're not careful it can make your um, creature look um, pretty patchy if you're not careful with your with your faked ink. <laughs> um, so just you know, but it, it it is a really nice way to give it more of that depth kind of look because again, now I can go back in, take some of my white, go back over my ridges again ever so slightly there we go mm. and go back with my orange go back over it again now this time we'll want to be a little more cautious because we don't want it to cover the brown that we just put on all right, and that just gives it just a little bit, something extra, you know? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other talons so that at least they look the same. All right, there we go. Give it a little bit of highlights. There we go. Get on the back side there. Get some of our orange. Go back over that. Hmm, I probably should have waited longer for that one to dry. That's okay. I can always go back and fix it. But at least they're a lot more similar now. <clears throat> All right. Let us look at the belly. Okay, so we talked before, 
we want that belly to be a lighter color because that is what you know a more realistic lion would have i'm going to use my off-white if you have a cream a nice cream color would be really good if you don't have that that's perfectly fine go ahead and use your your white color or you can even pre-mix i'm not a big fan of pre-mixing because it's hard to get that same color again but sometimes you got to so anyway um so feel free to pre-mix um use the the orchid color with the white um what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go ahead and use my off-white to put a coat down of uh underneath on his belly and then i'm gonna go back with my orchid color on top of that okay so all right let's just just be a little generous here. Um, we're gonna go up his backside because usually it kind of covers their, their rear ends, their haunches where they sit. Um, I'm not necessarily trying to get into those creases, okay? So uh, I'm just lightly dabbing over his underbelly in just a few spots. Some of those um, areas on the inner legs but again, I'm more just trying to kind of give a very light coat to mostly just, you know, what is kind of visible about that belly and those legs, okay? I'm gonna go up into the feathers just a little bit like we did before. That looks good. Okay. Now I'm gonna go back and I am not adding water to any of these things that I am doing this detailed work with, okay? So, um, and unless I say otherwise, like with the inking, I would say don't add any additional water to these colors that you're using. Okay, so so our belly's got this, this white on it now. I think it's pretty dry, because again, I did a pretty light touch of it. So now we're going to take our orchid color. This is our original color for our body, our lion's body. And we're going to take that and go back over that white that I just put down. Okay. And again, I wouldn't do a heavy amount. I would just kind of just kind of touch up some places. around so probably not gonna be a lion's underside is probably not gonna be like this super white color so I am I am going back over but I am leaving a few spots just a few spots of this real light color um, or I'm being very thin about the yellow color that I am using um, just to show how light that underbelly is Okay, I'll just mark some of that off. There we go. Okay. Um, so, again, I don't know how well you can tell, but I am kind of using the side of my brush to just kind of brush through these feathers underneath and lighten them up as well because just, you know, it is part, um, the griffin is part mammal as well so it's even its feathers on its underside would make sense to be lighter than the rest of it so that's just kind of what I'm trying to do there um, and you may end up covering most of your lighter color up and if that's the case that's fine you know this is this is just to kind of try an effort to try and give it that that different look that just gives it a, that little extra detail. Okay, so um, my underside here, most of my, my rear end kind of really got pretty covered up. So there's a little bit of wet blending for you. <laughs> so I, uh, while my orchid color was still wet, I went ahead and just took a little bit of that off white and kind of, and they kind of meld together like as I'm painting rather than mixing them ahead of time. Um, it really helps with the blending process 
too, so that's kind of nice. All right. Okay. All right. I'm liking that belly. Feeling good about that. Let's look at these wings. Let's do some dry brushing. Okay. I brought a much lighter brown color to do that dry brushing with. I think I'm gonna like it okay, but again, if I don't, what I may end up doing is just like before, where I take the white, I dry brush it on, and then I dry brush this on. Um, and then again, just a reminder that if you're doing a different um, bird than I am, if you're not doing the eagle, then uh, you're gonna want to be careful of your patterning, your patterning, patterning on your feathers. So um, if you're not doing the eagle that I'm doing, then use whatever color would be fitting for your, um, your eagle or your bird. I need my dry brush. brush. Okay. So this paint that I'm using is a little bit thinner. So that is going to be a bit more of a challenge but I think we're gonna be okay. So I'm just putting, putting an F on my brush, but then I'm gonna take my paper towel, just like I showed you before, and I'm going to just kind of brush it across until it's just such a light pattern, okay? Then I will take it and apply it to my actual um, bird here, so. Mm, that is not going on as light as I would like it to. Yeah, so I can see a slight difference, but I almost guarantee you can't. <laughs> so it is not giving me enough difference, enough contrast to actually be worthwhile. So I am going to go ahead and do like I mentioned before, and I'm going to dry brush the white on. And then, um, actually, I'm going to do my off-white. Um, I really like off-white. <laughs> I am going to dry brush the off-white on and then I will um, go back and do that light brown color that I was intending to do to begin with. All right. Come on, white. There we go. <clears throat> okay. So I'm going to use off-white. Again, you by no means have to Feel free to just use a regular white or even a cream color is very nice um, underneath of this brown. Okay, so I'm going to take that, do my same kind of, yeah, I need enough paint on there, but just not very much on the tips. Okay, all right, there we go. That's at least, at least you can tell it's been dry brushed. <laughs> Alright, so these feathers are kind of going all different angles, but because we made sure to wipe enough off on our paper towel, um, we're just kind of going brushing the opposite direction of the, um, of the effects of the wings, um, and then sometimes the opposite directions of the wings themselves, because you also want to get your dry brush around those edges as well. Um, a lot of times you'll see on, um, not all birds, but some, some birds have like the lighter edges to their feathers. And a lot of times it seems natural in miniature painting to do that as well. Uh, and so again, just for a tabletop, it, it works perfectly fine. So you can see already the difference between those two wings. And honestly, I probably, I am going to go ahead and do that brown because I do like to have several layers of brown, but I, I, even after I do that, I may go back in and add some more white again, just um, because it does look nice to have such a sharp contrast. It just looks real nice. Okay. So, so there's our white on there. Um, instead of, um, Instead of moving on, I'm going to go ahead and put that brown on so I can see what it looks like before I get too far into things. 
and then also hopefully just kind of show you what a difference that can make having that white on there first versus just going straight to a lighter brown color. So now you can actually see that brown versus like it just looking the same color. <laughs> All right, but I did like that white on there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead, and go back to that off white. Oh, in case you didn't notice, I'm so sorry. I moved to my like dry brushing frayed bristle brush, just FYI. <laughs> Um, okay, I'm going to be very choosy about where I put this, but I do want to add some of that white back in to these larger feathers. So I'm just going to make those just a little bit lighter. There we go. up this direction a little bit maybe some of these smaller feathers even that are closer to them there we go just kind of gives it it's a little bit more depth there and something I might actually I think I will go ahead and do is let's go ahead and add just a little bit of our orchid color in here as well let's see what that gives us If we add just a few of these feathers in here, just kind of dab that in a little bit. Look at that. Just gives us some nice definition. Just a nice little, just something different, you know? Okay, and maybe you like the brown and that's awesome. You don't have to keep layering, but you can keep playing with different things. Um, look at eagle's wings, see you know what the different um, aspects are of it. Um, I'm gonna pull back this owl bear that I did before as well. So on the owl bear, I did different kind of layers where I had like a yellowish with a brown color and then this off white and then another darker brown with a yellow and then an off white. And so it just kind of like, it just kind of, they kind of play off of each other and it just gives it a little bit extra depth to them um, as well as like just showing that it's not um, perfect because nothing in nature is truly perfect. And so it just kind of gives it just a little extra character. Anyway, so you can you can do whichever way you like if you liked the this the brown on top of the lighter brown on top of the darker brown that's fine if you liked doing the white by itself that's fine you know whatever whatever you like about that piece of the miniature you know whatever colors you like for it all right so now i'm going back to my off-white I'm gonna do this side now. Doing that off-white color really just lets the other colors that we layer on top pop more. So it's just kind of a nice little treatment to do first. Um, while I'm here, since I liked what I did already, I am gonna go ahead and do that to this back. Make sure I don't have very much white on here because I don't want to coat everything. Just touching a few places. I am being a little bit more cautious about the back because it does not have nearly as much detail as the actual wings have. The back is, um, it's just a little bit more, f like it's got, it's got feathers, but the feathers aren't like all, um, uh, I don't know, striped, rigid, feather looking <laughs> like the back it or like the wings are. So I'm just being a little bit more cautious about how much I put on those ones. Okay. So there's that. Okay. Let's 
we'll move over to my brown. Okay, now let's apply my brown. If your colors start to blend together too much, um, then it might be that you didn't wait long enough between um, letting the white dry. Depending on the brand you're using, it may need just a tad bit more time. Or if you maybe applied a little too much white, it might need more time to dry before adding on the other colors. So just FYI, if that's the case, then just like, just let it dry and then add the white back on again to help lighten it back up again and then go and, tr and let that dry and then try again. Okay. All right, then I went back to my cream color. So I'm gonna do that again. I'm just gonna follow the same pattern that I did on the other wing and how I did that one. And I'm gonna put this white back into the tips. and just a little bit in some of these larger feathers at the end. There we go. Then maybe up the ridge just a little bit. Okay. And then I did my orchid color. Pop that open again. There we go. All right. And we're going to do some of these center ones. There's more of that orchid color. Some of these top ones. There we go. Okay. I think the other side, the first side that I did, I think I put the yellow maybe a little too far down. So I'm gonna go back over with some white, brighten that up again. The other thing is that um, White doesn't always easily cover things. So you'll notice I went back over this, which I'm actually really liking how bright it turned out this time. Um, but because it was already white, I went back over it again and it looks even brighter and you can see more depth in it as opposed to this side that I only went over once. So I'm gonna actually do that second coat of white on here as well to help those pop out more. There we go. There. I am really liking that a lot. Okay. So we've kind of got some, some depth there to our, to our griffin. So now the only thing we have left is the underside of those wings in his chest. Um, I will say the chest is going to be a little bit more challenging. Let's go ahead and do our underside of our wings so we can just have those done and then we'll tackle the chest and then we'll be all set with our griffin. Okay, so this side you're going to need to be a little more cautious about your application. Um, there's slightly less definition than the top and we also don't have the room, the air room that we did up top to just kind of freely brush across. So we have to be more careful because we don't want um, our paint to accidentally get into our actual lion piece or something like that. Now granted, at least white is easy to cover up um, and we have to touch it up again, but I mean, we're so close to being finished. So do we really want to go back? <laughs> so, all right, there's that. Okay, and then while I have my white on my brush, I am going to go ahead and do this other wing since we know we like what our pattern is now. So I'm just going to dry brush that on there. Try and be cautious around this corner and over the top here. There we go. Okay, there we go. That's looking good. All right, I'm liking that. 
Now, um, we kind of talked about before how underside of critters are usually lighter colors. Like even for eagles, the underside of their wings is often a lighter color. Um, so instead of taking the straight brown that I had been using, I do think I'm going to break my little rule and mix. I'm gonna go ahead and mix a color here for the underside. I just took I just took a small brush full of the brown here and a small brush full of my off-white color and then mix them together right here. Okay. Um, again, we're dry brushing, so we shouldn't need very much. So let's just kind of brush that on there. It almost looks like a slightly more peachish brown, which is okay. Because again, it's the underside of the wing. It more naturally looks different than the top side. So that's okay. All right. There we go. Let's add that little little bit of different color there. There we go. All right. This is looking nice. I'm liking this. And then maybe you do want to go back and do some touch-ups of, of the, the actual brown color, and that is absolutely fine. In fact, I might do that along the edges of the wings here real quick before I add that yellow on. All right, so I'm going to take my regular brown, dry brush that out, and right on here, oh, I got to dry brush too much out. There we go. There we go. Right along there, just do some of this more darker brown, and it can fade into that that peachy colored brown that we've got on there. There we go. That looks good, I think. All right, let's go ahead and add in our orchid color just so that it matches slightly to our top side. I'm gonna just put a few. Again, I'm more just doing some um, preferential placement rather than doing all over. Um, you can do as you please on this. So, you know, feel free to be creative, do certain feathers, do, you know, a pattern if you want, whatever you might kind of want to do there. Okay, there we go. Again, do just be careful about not getting, now granted this one is the same color as your your lion body, but still, it's better to be cautious because you may accidentally get it onto something you don't want it on. There we go. Okay, and there's the underside of our wings. All right, so body and what I have forgotten almost the entire time the tail. <laughs> Let's go ahead and do the tail real quick. All right. Just going to use this lighter brown that I made earlier and just kind of do some dashes across it. Now this one, I definitely recommend just doing literally perpendicular. So opposite direction that the, that the um, fur is going. You want to go the opposite direction, take the side of your brush, and just brush right over it. Okay. Oops, getting a little bit up there, but at least it's on the wing already. It's going to be a tad bit harder, and again, you're going to be you're going to need to be more cautious because um, it's a lot closer to all those other areas. All right, now I'm taking my regular brown going back over top to cover up that white. And I don't think I really want any white showing on my tail. I don't feel like that would be a very natural look for a lion tail. So I am trying to cover up 
just about all that white that I had added. And I do think that it still works. Yeah, I think that works just fine. Um, if you don't think it's dark enough, you can absolutely use some of that like inky brown that we made earlier. You can use that on there and it will, it should help um, create more of that depth into some of those places. And actually I do see a couple places I might want to do that. I'm just pulling that br inky brown that I made earlier and just gonna just dab into some of these creases mm. to hopefully try and bring out some of that depth to the fur. All right, there, I like that pretty well, I think. Now, granted, it's gonna run a little bit, so just be careful about how you hold your miniature because you don't want it to run down the tail. You want it to run to the end, the end of the tail. Um, and if you feel like you put too much, just clean your brush, dry it off, and pull some of that back up, okay? Okay, all right, chest, and then we are done. Okay. Um, just like on the, um, the wings, we're gonna take our off-white color, so that way we kind of have some highlights to, to start with. Okay, there's not, again, there is not as much, oof, it's too much white. There's not as much definition to these feathers. So I urge you to be cautious of your highlighting. Just to do some very, very light dry brushing, best you can at least, um, over these feathers. Um, using the side of our brush, not the tip. We're using the side to just kind of roll over those edges to find where the actual like top feathers are. All right, there you go. And I probably am not gonna do as many colors and patterns on the chest and things as I did on the wings. Just cause I do want my wings, I preferably would like my wings to stand out a little bit more. So what I'm probably going to do, yeah. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually not even gonna use the orchid on this ones. So I've got the white on there that I wanted. I'm gonna clean my brush and I'm gonna go back to that brown that I had before. Make sure my brush is very dry. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go back to that brown that I had before and I think, unless I don't like it when I get done, I think I'm only gonna use this brown. And so it'll just be just highlighting some of those feathers rather than taking away some of the, the fun details of the wings. Because I don't really care if people pay attention to his chest or legs. I do want them to have some definition, but I really like the wing aspect of our griffin more so. And so I want that to be the focus. So having less detail on the chest and body is gonna be good so that way people can focus more on those wings. Okay, there we go. I'm just trying to get all those places that I put a little bit of white. Just trying to give it just, just a touch. There we go. Okay. I probably could have gone with another coat of white on his chest just to kind of um, make that brown pop a little bit more, but I honestly I'm okay with it because again, I really more so want his wings and his feathers to pop more. Um, just like I talked about before, you're, you can always do a little bit more inking if you don't like something. Um, and we talked before about like some of these 
creases. Let me get back to my smaller brush here. Some of these creases in the in the back side of our lion might be nice if they had some kind of ink on them. I don't know that I would necessarily use the really dark ink color that we made with that super dark brown, but maybe using this lighter brown color that we used on the wings, we could maybe use that to go in and put some inking spots on there. And that would kind of help give that definition to those other parts. See, so that looks good. There we go. So we can we can really kind of make some of those creases, uh, those muscle tones stand out more with just doing just a little bit of inking of a slightly darker color, but not as super dark as some of our other locations are. Um, if you don't like the way it blends, you can use the technique that I showed you before where again where you lay your brush down gets the most ink or most paint and then as you brush stroke away it leaves less paint and so you can use that as a technique to then um, uh, blend in these little areas of muscle tone so even just what i've done there can really make those little muscly areas stand out just a little bit more and just shows how strong our griffin, you know, really is. Okay, I'm gonna do just a couple more places with this and then I am going to call it good. So let's just do this real quick. Down his leg. His back haunches kind of have some really good definition there. Um, so I'm using my thumb to just wipe off a little bit of the excess that I'm seeing. Um, you may not end up needing to do that depending on how much of the inky paint that you have on, on your brush. Or if you don't feel like you can do it with your thumb, um, again, like I showed you before, you can always do the um, clean your paintbrush, dry it off and then dab the areas that you feel like you have too much in. And that can help um, take out some of that paint as well. Okay, there we go. I'm liking that a lot. Just a few, just a few well-placed muscle structures that just show that he's got He's got some power. <laughs> okay, that is our griffin. Now we didn't really do anything with the base, but it's got, again, you could go back over it with that gray color. Um, let me go back to my owl bear over here. Um, so the owl bear, I had actually used some terrain um, and some, um, some sand that I then put grass on top of. And the sand is a nice effect. It doesn't actually look like sand anymore um, because it melted with the glue and most, uh, and then the, the grass covered up like the, the sandy color. But all the little stones that were in the sand still showed up. And so now they look like little stones and pebbles on the ground where my owl bear is walking. And so that's something that you know you could do for this kind of thing. Um, you could also do, uh, again, the gray, um, maybe you do some highlighting with an off, um, an off white bluish color that matches your gray, different things like that. So it just kind of depends on what you want to do with your griffin, where you want them to be um, and different things like that. So I don't often worry about the base. I will probably just put another solid coating over top of it, being cautious of the feet um, and call it good for a um, tabletop miniature. 
But otherwise, I think I'm pretty happy. Hopefully you're happy with your Griffin as well, or at least learned a few things um, from the class today. Um, thank you all so much for joining me. Um, I'm gonna be doing another miniature painting at two o'clock today, where I will be painting a, um, a gazer and a specter, which are like little tiny mini versions of beholders. They're, they're kind of cute if you ask me, but <laughs> so I'll be painting those today at two o'clock if you'd like to join me. Otherwise, thank you all so much.